The following is a presentation of CU TV Sports. Beautiful day in North Central Pennsylvania from the campus of Mansfield, Mansfield University. Your California Vulcans look to go 2 0 as they visit the Mountaineers. Hello, everybody. CU TV presents California Vulcans football. I'm Ben Slazik with Paul Genua. Paul, California coming in 1 0, coming off a bye week, looking to extend this streak that they look like this could be a year after an impressive victory in their opener against Fairmont. Well, California was picked to finish second in the division this year, Ben, and a strong start in week one two weeks ago against Fairmont State at home a game which was televised by Fox Sports at Pittsburgh so California got a little bit more um, recognition from the from the local area they won that game 42 to 6 last year when these two teams faced it was the opening game of the season for both teams and California won 63 to 6 Mansfield had taken an early 6 nothing lead before California roll off seven straight touchdowns going into the half and we're gonna get right into the game here we're gonna talk a lot about two of the best running backs in the East region, the Northeast region, perhaps the country. An All-American last year, of course, Antoine Bagwell. His 1,100-yard game as a California Vulcan last week. And Ernest Pooh Bear McNeil coming off a 200-yard performance against West Virginia Wesleyan. John Fowler kicks off back deep to return. His number two, Ronnie Montgomery, gets a block up the middle, and he's got a big hole off the right side. He's the 40. He's got Fowler to beat, and Fowler holds him up long enough for reinforcements. But the Mountaineers will take over in California territory to start this game. Well, California has a tough defense, Ben, and if Mansfield wants to score and score early, that's what they need to do. They need to have good special teams play. And that Mansfield offense, they run a three-receiver look. Quarterback number 11, Brandon Hunt, another big quarterback that California has to face, 6'7", 220. Pooh Bear McNeil, the single back. Ronnie Davis, Dan McDonough, and Tyrone Robinson, the wideouts, and we'll get to the offensive line after this play as the Mountaineers are going to come out with four backs and the single set, four receivers, and the single back is Pooh Bear McNeil. Draw play to McNeil. And bottling him up quickly at the line of scrimmage, Lloyd Price, the first man there for the Vulcans, and it'll be second and 10. The offensive line for the Mountaineers, Falks, Cobaw, Aston, Gunasil, and Dayton up front. For the Vulcan defense, which played extremely well against Fairmont, the three, four linemen, Tarabisky, Testa, and Rose up front, Price, Moore, Zunich, and Butler, the linebackers, cooking glass at the corners, Jermaine Moy, the free safety, and senior Jared Dumb in at strong safety. Another four receiver look. for quarterback Brandon Hunt. And he will drop back to pass, quickly over the middle, and a nice attempt at a juggling catch, getting up for Mansfield was 88, and that is Ozzie Mathis. That pass just a little high, and it'll be third and long, coming up actually a third and 11 after that loss on first down. Last year, Cal's defense did a good job holding Mansfield um, in, under check. The, the only score from Mansfield came after a blocked punt. Um, Pooh Bear McNeil last year only gained 33 yards on 20 carries. And a little bit of the Cal offensive playbook right now is Mansfield's going hurry up. Hunt under center now. And a little bit of confusion. They'll swing it out wide. Pass completed to Matthew Hildebrand. And he is cut down short. Number 58 on the stop for the Vulcans. And that is Brian Moore with the stop. Moore, a backup, excuse me, a starting inside linebacker of Riverside High School. And a quick four or quick three and out after a nice return off the opening kickoff. And California will get the ball back as Mark Huddleston stands at his own 10. Yeah, that was a good job of the Cal defense to hold after the um, good uh, kickoff return put Mansfield in good field position. The punters, Brandon Fields, a 5'9 junior. And he's going to try and pooch us, but he gets a lot under it. Huddleston calls fair catch, and this will go back of the end zone. And California will start first and 10 from their own 20 with 13-20 left to play the first quarter. Let's take a look at the California starting offense today. you got Joe Ruggiero, the sophomore, 6'2", 195 pounds, starting at quarterback. Behind him will be Antoine Bagwell, the All-American running back. At wide receiver, you have Marcellus Gardner, Brandon Jackson, and Mark Huddleston. Huddleston, the uh, second-year transfer out of Once Purdue. The, the offensive line is Josh Stewart, Tim McCutcheon, one of the best in the country, Eric Zesnanski, Derek Catris, Carl J, and followed up with the tight end, Matt Gerger. And that offensive line showed a lot in the last game. Three different players scoring touchdowns, four total rushing touchdowns for the Vulcans. Ruggiero under center, fakes the draw, and he's going to the air. Over the middle, wide open is Nate Forrest at the 40, and he'll pick up 30 yards, gets the ball near midfield on the first play from scrimmage. Forrest, the big 
target, 6'4", 220, transferring from West Virginia, the Laurel Highlands product, with a big gain on first down. Let's get the uh, look at the defense from Mansfield real quick. You got Keith Slezik, Brian name. Smith, Wes Bear, Nick Roseberry. That's the defensive line. At linebacker, Jason Ziegler, Andre Turner, Rob Smiley. In the backs are John Mathis, Ryan Kazik, CJ Okajeri, and Ronnie Montgomery. Five receiver look, they're gonna swing it out. Bagwell on a running back screen, gets to the corner and he's gonna have a big chunk of yard. He's got one man to beat, cuts it back across, knocked off bounce, runs into Garner and he's still on his feet. Bagwell from 51 yards away, touchdown California up quickly, less than three and a half minutes into this game. The Balkans for six. California with the quick strike. There as uh, Bagwell was rushing down the the near side of the field. I thought he should have stayed to the near side, but mm -hmm. he cut it back and you know what? Don't, don't disagree with what Bagwell decides to do. He's got great vision on the field. And Bagwell, who doesn't catch a whole lot of balls out of the backfield, lined up in the slot there and got some great blocking. Actually ran into Marcel's Garner down the field, but two pass plays. We talk about the running game and the offensive line, but Ruggiero starts this game off with two big passes. Now Fowler will come on to add the extra point. Dumb will hold. John Testa, the long snapper, and a knuckle shot through. No, he missed it. Wide left. And Fowler with the first California miss of a PAT in a long time. But with 12.49 left to go here in the first quarter, just a little over two minutes into this game, the Vulcans up by six points. Well, that's what California needs to do. They need to strike quick. As I was telling uh, our director, Gary Smith, on the way up here, the first cut is the deepest. And California got the first cut in today against Mansfield. And to recap, Mansfield had the opening also kickoff, had a great return into California territory, there, three and out. And then California with on two plays, a 20-yard right right pass, or 30-yard pass, I should say, from Ruggiero to force, for the and then a little swing pass, and Bagwell, and the you get him into open space, he can do the rest on his own. And that gives us a 6 nothing lead. And if you're Mansfield, Paul, you come out with that big return, quickly deflate it. Now the Balkans, just like that, snap your fingers, have six on the board. What do you do if you're Mansfield? They came out with four receivers, didn't do a whole lot. Well, if you're Mansfield, hopefully you get another good return. And then I would give it to your feature back, Pooh Bear McNeil. He had over 200 yards in uh, week one. And um, he, he, as we said, he's one of the top backs in the country. However, he has not had success against the, the Vulcans in the past. A couple years ago, he had, a, well, I'd say an average game. He was around 80, 90 yards. His Fowler kicks was off to Montgomery, back by himself, a field at the two. Good coverage by the Vulcans. And Montgomery's going to have to try and make something happen. And he does again before he's bottled up at the 30-yard line. Ronnie a nice Montgomery. return for Ronnie yeah, Montgomery, a 6-foot, 185-pound senior out of Syracuse, New York. And that's where Wait, Mansfield right, will start, first and 10 from their own 30. Syracuse and New York usually think of that as being somewhere pretty far away. But up here in Mansfield, I forget that we're seven miles from New York, so it's really not that far, probably only a three-hour drive. Mansfield doesn't have a huge roster in comparison to California, but they have had some good athletes. And I'm taking a look at their quarterback, and Hunt is a large human being under center, 6'7", 220 from Hornell, New York. And he's going to look with four receivers, trips to the right, and the give will be McNeil, and that looks straight out of the California playbook, but McNeil is bottled up immediately at the 31. A host of Vulcan tacklers. Anthony Rose was there, and I believe that is Lloyd Price peeling himself off the bottom. It'll be second down and nine. California defense already doing a good job. Pooh Merrick McNeil has received the ball twice from quarterback Brandon Hunt, and twice has got little to barely a yard. And again, I, I hate to say it, but this looks just like the California offense. That exact play we've seen probably 100 times over the last year and a half. We'll look, four receivers, two to each side. McNeil, sidecar to the right. Cal shows blitz. And the play fake, they'll roll Hunt out. And it's batted down and right back into Hunt's face by Brian Moore, who has had a couple big plays already in this first quarter. And if you're in basketball, that is, uh, that's what we call a SWAT, Paul. Brian Moore, the six foot one, 230 pound, 30 pound linebacker out of Beaver Falls, PA, went to Riverside High School, making the most of his playing time. And you can see the Mansfield sidelines bringing the play in on a dry erase board. They may want to huddle up here because so far it hasn't been real effective. Third and nine, they'll move Hunt under center. The righty drops back, and he'll fire over the middle, and that pass is knocked down by who else? Brian Moore. 
You and I were talking, California's linebackers had half of the team's 70 tackles in the game against Fairmont. But they are a very good coverage group as far as linebackers, especially Moore and Zunich, who now really have a chance to shine. Only sophomores for the graduated Nishkos. The Cardins have been in that inside position, and they played very well so far this year. Yeah, ever, in my four years here, California is known for having good linebackers. As you said, mentioned with the Nishko, there was also Odie, TJ Carden, yeah. Brian, and uh, Jason Brian Ellis. And here comes the punt. This is a wobbler towards Huddleston, and he's going to field on the bounce at his own 35, straight ahead, and he is hit and knocked down at the 48. A nice return for Huddleston, about 13 yards, and the Vulcans will start first and 10 from their own 48-yard line. 11.40 left to play in the first quarter. The Vulcans lead 6-0. The Vulcans on two plays getting in the end zone, where for six plays for the Mountaineers, right now they're at about zero yards. In last year's game, um, Joe Ruggiero went 22 of 28 passing against the, uh, the Mountaineers for 385 yards and five touchdowns. Ran for another one as well, and that's what we refer to as a coming out party. The big tight end, number 85, DeMond Baker, comes across the formation, and now Force will join him on that side. He'll give the Bagwell, and he'll counter back to the left side, and he's got another big hole, and just skips past the marker, and he should have enough for a first down. Ronnie Montgomery, the only thing saving Mansfield from being down by two touchdowns, and they will give him a first down, 10-yard gain by Bagwell. Well, so far, three offensive plays for the Vulcans, and two touches by Antoine Bagwell. You can see how much he really means to this Cal offense. And you're seeing Nate Force in there a lot more, too. It looks like he got the start tonight. And a big target. He's the biggest of any of Cal's receivers. And with Whitaker and Graves graduating last year, that's nearly 20 touchdowns, over 80 catches. Somebody's got to step up and Force, who comes in as a junior, still with two good years left here for a California player. Draw play. And Bagwell straight ahead, and he gets caught by the back of the jersey. Nice job that time recognizing the draw by the front line by Mansfield. A gain of maybe one. It'll be second and nine. It looked as though Mansfield had brought a linebacker on a blitz from the uh, far side of the field there, the right side of the line. Uh, Bagwell almost was able to get up through the middle before, and, and, and almost... The, the blitz almost over pursued, but uh, the, Mansfield did a good job of closing that up. They'll now use an eye set in her here, an offset eye. And Ruggiero will go under center. 6 2 sophomore out of Detroit. Play fake. This has worked so far. He's got Jackson wide open. He's got to dump the ball, and the big man Baker tries to get up. But that's 265 pounds trying to get about eight feet in the air. That ain't going to happen. And we'll have a third down and nine. I was looking on the near side of the field. Robert Calhoun, who had checked into the game, yeah. he was he was open running down the field. He had one man near him. But I, I, if, if Ruggiero would have rolled to this side, he might have been able to see him maybe hook up with him for a, a completion. And what a backup Robert Calhoun is. He could probably start for seven, eight teams in the PSAC. He scored a touchdown, a long run last year. He's been the team's second leading rusher for three straight years. But imagine him in the same backfield with Bagwell as we've seen a couple times tonight. That's a lot of options for offensive coordinator. For California, Ruggiero is going to throw again. That ball is tipped behind force, intended for Huddleston. Getting a hand on it appeared to be number five, Andre Turner, junior linebacker out of Peabody High in Pittsburgh. He's been a good player here for a couple years, and the Vulcans will have to punt for the first time tonight. Well, not a, not a bad job by the Mansfield defense. They allowed Cal to have one first down, but then they held their ground, so they'll get the ball back. However, Cal has an opportunity to pin them deep. Fowler on the punt. John Fowler will punt for California. Fowler averaging only about 33 yards a punt so far this year. Had a few kicks. Lloyd Price came running onto the field a bit late. Transfer from Pitt, Bell Vernon product, and gets a good high kick off. Montgomery back. He's going to have to call a fair catch and will field it at his 13 yard line. 10 17 left to play first quarter. The Vulcans off an Antoine Bagwell 51 yard touchdown reception leads Mansfield 6 to nothing. And if you're Mansfield, again, your offense has looked very stagnant at the very least, and they've had pretty good field position each of the last two series. Now you're backed up in the 12. Is this where you call on the dogs if you're California and try and get the hunt? Yeah, I'd like to see a blitz here, a blitz or two here from the defense, see what they can uh, do, possibly push them back even further, and either maybe get a safety or force them into a bad turnover or have to punt from their own end zone. And they'll give the ball to McNeil. That's a pretty good option. 
But there was more again, and also on the play was Zunich. And it will be a gain of about four yards. Sets up second down and six. Tackle on the play by Zunich, the Wexford product, Zunich. North Allegheny High School sophomore. All these linebackers, three sophomores and Price a senior. That's going to be a good group for some years to come. Well, some of these linebackers, they'd wanted to even redshirt last year, yeah. but due to a couple injuries, Zunich, as well as uh, I believe at least one or two others, had to uh, get some playing time early, but it got them some experience. Trips to the left side on second and five. And this looks like a naked boot. Hunt's in all kind of trouble, and he's just going to fire it into his own bench as Tara Visky and Lloyd Price were all over that play. What kind of a busted play as well. It's going to be third and five coming up. Yeah, I'm not sure quite what was supposed to happen there. He, he took like a one-step drop and looked to want to throw the ball before he dashed out to the near side of the field looking to run. And then when he realized there was no room, he just threw it away. So a smart play by Hunt to get rid of that football. And that, that's a good point, too. Better than taking the sack. What is he now, Paul? One for five on the day. And that lone pass completion is about a yard. He's going to snap back, and he's going to scramble now. He's going down the field, and this pass is going to be well over the head of his intended receiver, 88 John Mathis. Coverage on the play made by Jermaine Moy and Jared Dumb, the two safeties, and another three and out for Mansfield now. Nine offensive plays, they have about six total yards, and the Vulcans will get their third series of the game. Fourth series, excuse me. Well, the Vulcans are known for having a staunch defense. They've been um, very well disciplined in, in practice by all their coaches. As we said two weeks ago in their opening game, they only allowed six points to Fairmont State. And this is a pretty good punt, and Huddleston with the wind behind him. He's got to feel this. And is unable to get past Montgomery. Josh Kemp tried to throw a block, but it would have been a clip if he would have hit his man. And that is a huge punt. And Montgomery will force Huddleston back a return of about a minus, I'd say seven or eight at that play. And the Vulcans off to start from their own 29 yard line with 9.13 left to go here in the first quarter. Well, still not horrible field position for Cal. At your own 29, you're at least outside of the, the other team's red zone, so. Um, Looking to get down the field again, get another score here. They bring in three wide receivers, or four wide receivers, excuse me. Cal likes to run that big wide open offensive set. Can't tell that's Calhoun or Bagwell next to. It's Bagwell who picks up the blitz nicely and a nice completion as Rogerio hooks up with Marcellus Garner. He'll make the catch at his own 49. He'll pick up about another 20 there, but a nice pitch and catch from Rogerio to Garner. Garner, the second year man out of McKeesport High School, 6'3", 200, another good size wide receiver on the outside for the Vulcans. And the, Garner is a receiver that the Vulcans have really been looking to step up this season, especially, as you said, with the loss of Whitaker and Graves last year. Good speeds, good size, and this is something California did not do in the opener. They did not throw the ball down the field very well. So far, so good. Bagwell on first down gets tackled. No, excuse me, that's a keeper. Ruggiero with all kind of room down left side, fooled everybody, wow. and he just steps out of bounds at the 20. He's going to pick up 30 yards on the bootleg. Yeah, I was fooled there myself, Ben. I thought Bagwell had the ball up the middle, and then I saw Ruggiero just what dashing down the, left, the far side of the field. I think Mansfield was fooled as well. And as you said, he picked up about 30 yards before running out of bounds. Ruggiero, as everybody knows, had that horrible injury last year at Clarion, broke his leg, and I believe a couple places. Against Fairmont, you could still see he has the brace on it, limping a little bit, but he was a pretty good runner before the injury, and he's showing he's still got a little bit of that speed on the outside and a 30-yard gain. We'll, we'll get it done. And if you have that option with your quarterback who has some speed, that's, that's always a plus for your offense. Most California back quarterbacks in the last couple years have been able to run the ball, and this looks like it's an option, and he's going to pitch it out to Bagwell. That might have actually been a pass from where it was, but he's going to lose about a yard on the play. It'll be second down 11. Mansell doing a nice job sniffing that out. Either way, I don't like that call, but I, I don't like the option play where you, where you start in the shotgun, and especially running to the short side of the field. Yeah. I prefer, especially on an option when you get to stretch out the defense, give yourself That's more room, come to the far side. And with Cal's yeah. offensive line, I don't think they really need to run that wide and, and kind of gimmicky runs. Just go right at them. I don't think there's a defensive front seven, front eight, whatever, that can match up with California. They'll show Calhoun and Bagwell in the game at the same time again. Split to either side. Here comes the blitz. Ruggiero steps up. He wants the end zone. He fires for Force, and Force makes the catch at the one. Nate Force with another great catch in traffic, using all 6'4 of his frame, and it'll be a first and goal for California. 
Good job by Nate Force to show his leaping ability, get up in the air, make that catch. It's the second catch of the ball game so far. And I, I've been trying to keep the best stats that I can. I believe Ruggiero is four for six so far in the game, so doing a good job. In the game against Fairmont, he was very accurate, but they were all seven, eight, nine yard passes. They're stretching the field today. And Force now with four catches on the year, and now two catches for about 50 yards in this game. Brandon Lombardi, who had two touchdowns in the opener behind Palshaw in the backfield. Lombardi, the transfer from Purdue, adds his third touchdown of the year, six for the Vulcans, and it is a 12 nothing game. Well, Lombardi is the Jerome Bettis of the California Vulcans. They like to bring him in on that short uh, goal, goal to go yardage situations. He's a bigger back and can just pound it in there for you. Lombardi, a transfer from Purdue, only a freshman, six foot, 212 pounds from Moreland Hills, Ohio. And with the Vulcans failing on the point after on their first score, will now go for two. One thing that the Vulcans have been able to do with uh, John Lockhart and as coach is to bring in a lot of good transfers from D Division yeah. One schools. Yeah. As Lombardi you mentioned, Lombardi from Purdue, Purdue Mark Huddleston also from Purdue, and Nate Force, who's had two catches in the game out of uh, West, West Virginia. Virginia. They'll give the ball to Bagwell, and he still is on his feet at the one, and the pow pushes him through for the conversion. And there's a size of that offensive line, Paul, helping out their back, and is now a 14-0 game with still 8.25 left to play in the first quarter. Well, I'm not sure if it was because of the first missed extra point that they just wanted to go for two and get the, the nice even 14 or if they just felt that maybe Fowler wasn't wasn't good enough to kick the ball. I think it was just the two to get back the uh, point they missed. Rob Smiley, a senior linebacker out of Woodland Hills, was at the bottom of that pal and Bagwell just rolled right over him. He is down right now. But California has done a lot of things right. This was a big crowd. This Van Norman Stadium field, whatever you want to call it, is not very big as far as seating goes, but it is packed right now. There's a lot of fans here from Mansfield. I believe this is their first home game as well. And the wind is completely out of the sails when their band came in, which for the record is a very good marching band. But uh, right now it is dead quiet here. Yeah, last week, Mansfield played their first game on the road at West Virginia Wesleyan. It was it was a shootout. Um, I believe the score was 41 to 33 or something of that nature. It was, um, as I said, a shootout, very high high offensive uh, game. So perhaps the fans, you know, 41 33. 41 33. Fans thought, you know, we got a good team this year. They're going to come out, showing a lot of good support here on uh, yeah, on the first opening home home game of the year. They got a lot of fans. Pulled up right in the grass, throw out their blankets, their lawn chairs, and they're sitting on the hill watching the game. Nice little place to play football here. Smiley hobbling off. It looks like to be a knee problem. But you mentioned Mansfield about seven miles from the New York border up in north central PA. It's about a five hour, five and a half hour drive from uh, California. Longer if you stop for food. Six hours if you go to Williamsport first and then head north. <laughs> Gary's not smiling that time. Well, it's, it's beautiful country up here. There's oh, a lot of open space, a lot of hills, a lot of fields. And a barn. There's a barn. There's a barn up in the background and a few houses up on top of the hill to our left. And a Wide open skies. And, uh, Cal plays here every other year and after this year they will be playing more of the East team so Cal and Mansfield will probably continue this mini rivalry they have. They've only met about nine times I believe and uh, California's definitely had the advantage so far. 14th meeting actually. 14th, excuse me. Smiley's okay, but right now the Mansfield offense is not. Nope. Nine plays, no first downs, only about four yards offense. And John Filer is going to kick off Montgomery back at his own five. And the most production the Mountaineers have gotten so far is on kick returns from Ronnie Montgomery. Fowler will kick with the wind. And this will back Montgomery back to his three, bobbles the ball. Is able to bring it up the middle. Now he's in trouble. Jared Dumb is there. And a host of white jerseys back up Montgomery to the 10. They'll give him forward progress to the 15. But two straight series. Mansfield's going to have to start inside their own 20 now with 8.19 left to play in a slow moving first quarter. Well, that was the third kickoff return for Montgomery in this game so far. And the first time Cal has held him to only a, a short gain. First two returns, one took out past the 40, the other took out past the 30. So good job by the Cal special teams to get down there in a hurry. Brandon Hunt under center. They're still going with that four wide receiver set. Hunt only played about a quarter in the first game. And there's McNeil tries the right, left side, excuse me, but he's bottled up. Number 90 on the stop, John Testa, 
along with Jared Dumman on the stop for California. Good team defense for the Vulcans, only a gain of two. Back on the play by Matt. Sector. Going back to the uh, series between the Vulcans and Mansfield, down, Cal holds down. nine to three to one lead in the series, including two wins in three se seasons here with, under Coach Luckhart. Now the gun now for Hunt, and they'll play fake. Here comes Price. It's a throwback screen, and Brandon Hunt is lucky he's still walking right now. Lloyd Price and came so totally untouched to the quarterback, and Hunt just fired into the sideline. It's going to be third and long now for the Mountaineers as nothing is going right on offense, and Lloyd Price has been one of the biggest disruptions for the Vulcans. Yeah, Lloyd Price, the senior linebacker, six foot, 225 pounds out of Monongahela, Pennsylvania, and Ringgold High School, Joe, Montan Joe Montana's alma mater. Uh, Brandon Hunt heard those footsteps coming. Dime defense, Josh Kemp, a two-way player and a quarterback. Hunt's going to throw, and he's just going to swing out to the sideline and completes it. But there is Kemp stopping his man very close to the line. I think he got it. Number 24, Paul Garofalo, a junior running back on the reception. And it depends on the spot. They're probably going to have to measure. Well, the, fir the first down marker was on was the the 15 yard line, I mean, excuse me, the 25 yard line, and the ball is sitting right on the edge of that line. It's gonna be a first down here. Garofalo's second catch of the year had one for two yards in the opener against Westland. I'm not sure if Cal was playing just a bit of a zone there or yeah, what was going on, because um, Josh Kemp was, was near the ball, but he stayed back, and which allowed Garofalo to get the first down. First down. Mountaineers, their first of the game, comes at 7.35 of the first half. In case you're running their big offensive receiver last week, Ronnie Davis, 7 for 75, but John Hangahold was the better quarterback last week, 17 to 31, not getting the start tonight. And Mansfield hopefully can now, for their sake, build off this and get something going. Garofalo listed as a fullback on the depth chart. He's been lined up in the slot most of the game. And Hunt, it's a throwback screen to his wide receiver. That is Mathis trying to get something going. Cuts it back, reverses his field before he's tackled by the I believe tips that's of his Price. toes by Lloyd yeah. Price. Price looks like he dove twice on that play, and the second one got the tackle. After all that running, Mathis is only going to get about three yards. It'll be second and seven. Yeah, Lloyd Price did a good job after he... His original attempt to make the tackle was a miss. He came out and did a good job of making the tackle, the shoestring tackle. So, Mansfield subs a couple players in and out. And Hunt sets his offense all tight to the left side. McNeil the single back. McNeil's been fairly quiet so far after a 200-yard performance. And they're going to run the reverse. But somebody was in the backfield. Lloyd Who else Price. was it? Was Lloyd Price and Anthony Rose cleans up the garbage. They're going to lose about five yards on the play. It's going to be sec excuse me, third and eleven. Lloyd Price is like in the huddle with Mansfield right now. I tell you, Lloyd Price really had a breakout year last season and really stepped up and, and proved himself to be a leader on that California defense. He did a good job getting in there right away breaking up what would have been a, what was supposed to be a, a wide receiver reverse play. He was to the ball before the receiver was. And that is generally a good way to shut down a reverse. I think he was hoping that Pooh Bear McNeil would just hand it off to him. Hunt's going to straight drop. Plenty of time, but now the pressure coming. And he's going to fire oh, down the field. Don't, jump don't ball. Don't ever do that. And a good Ooh. job by California's Jermaine Moy. And I believe that is Chris Glass down there to separate the receiver from the ball. Pass was intended for, I believe that was Mathis again, who had a hand on the ball a couple times. But the safeties for California break it up, and it'll be a fourth down. Hunt content to throw in the double and triple coverage all day. But and Hunt just broke the, the rule in football that you do not roll to your right and throw back across the middle of the field, which he did. That was a dangerous pass. On to punt is Brandon Fields. Brandon I believe it's his third punt already of the day. Good snap, Huddleston. Ooh, they almost got that one. And this is right into the win. Huddleston's going to field it on the bounce, has some problems with it, and is able to sneak it up to the 43-yard line. Tempers are starting to flare out there, and some pushing and shoving. And I thought for sure we were going to see a flag there against Mansfield, but the Vulcans with this two-touchdown lead, 544 left to play. Mansfield showing absolutely no life on offense. They've gotten one first down, but haven't really done anything with the football. The Vulcans have gone up and down the field really at will. 
And that gives them a 14 point lead and Mansell's got to keep their cool if they kind of want to stay in this game right now. Yeah, Mans Manfield's defense really only had that one good series. The second time that the Vulcans had the ball, they, they stopped them after they allowed one first down, they held their ground, but they really need to step it up and, and create turnovers for the, so their offense can have the ball in good field position. Jackson motions across, they'll counter play and this is Bagwell and he's tripped up almost immediately, gets to the 45. Number 44, Clarence Henley, a 5'11 redshirt freshman out of Philadelphia, Ben Franklin High School, and on the stop, a gain of two. It'll be second and eight. Well, one thing you want to watch for is if, if tempers do start to to get a little high here in this game, you got to watch out because California has had trouble in the past yeah, with good point. personal foul penalties. Bagwell's been probably one of their biggest culprits of that. and He had two in week one. Tempers uh, are getting up. And don't think Mansfield didn't forget about that game last year either. 63-6 to six back at Adamson. Ruggieri is going to throw the ball wide open. Huddleston over the middle. Makes a catch at the 30. And he has ridden down inside the 25, down to the 22. If I'm counting correctly, that's at least three passes of about 20 yards. And there wasn't a red jersey within five, six yards of Mark Huddleston. First down for California. Like a hot knife through butter, they're just cutting right down the middle of that Mansfield defense. It's the third time that Cal has lined up their wide receivers and just sent someone straight down the hash mark before we saw Nate Force do it twice, and this time it was Mark Huddleston. Just a little seam route. It's simple but yet effective, as I don't think Mansfield has the players that can cover these four receivers. Another blitz coming from the back side and firing a strike out to Garner. He'll make the reception at the 14. Gets another couple down to the 12. He'll pick up about nine yards on the play. He'll be second down and one. Garner's second catch of the day. Number 25 for Mansfield, CJ Okajeri, the junior, six foot, 216 pounds. Linebacker out of uh, Bayside, New York, or excuse me, New York, New York, Bayside High School. He was blitzing on the play. Ruggieri had to get rid of it in a hurry. And he was a smart play as well not to hit Ruggiero well after he threw the ball because that would have been an obvious roughing the passer penalty. Now we're going to see Brandon Lombardi in at tailback. Calhoun's in front of him on second down and one. And it will be Lombardi in the little counter play. But a nice play coming from the end by Okajeri. You caught him a play ago. Nobody got a helmet on him. And he stops Lombardi for about a two-yard loss. It's going to make it third down and a long two to go. Yeah, that's two plays in a row where Okajeri has come in unblocked. Cal needs to figure out whose assignment that is to step up there and make that block so that they can hopefully get a little more holes that they can run through in this uh, in the, through the offensive line there. They're going to bring in Rick Palshaw, a converted lineman who's been playing fullback for California, 6'3", 245 pounder off Ambridge. He's going to line up in front of Lombardi with a two tight end look and big Nate Force in motion. Play fake and a wide open Palshaw makes the catch at the 10 and he's ridden out of bounds inside the 10 to the seven yard line. And that's a safe assumption. That's Rick Palshaw's first career reception and it gives the Vulcans a first and goal. Yeah, I would say that's his first career reception. I've never even seen him in a, in a game yet until this point in time. So. Yeah, he played fullback against Fairmont. Nobody knew who he was because he had changed numbers. Oh, okay. Going from a 50 or a 60 into, into 84 that he's wearing now. And he's done a fairly effective job of blocking. And he's going to stand there at fullback, this time ahead of Antoine Bagwell. Two tight end look, Gerger and DeMont Baker on either end of the line. They'll toss it to Bagwell, left side, trying to get to the corner. Gets he's inside the five and six more. For the Vulcans, Bagwell's second touchdown of the game Airborne gives California a 20-0 to lead. Bagwell, touchdown, California. Yeah, that was a good job at Bagwell. He had he has the speed to beat just about anybody in the corner. Number eight, Ryan Kazik from Mansfield was attempting to go over there and make the tackle, but Bagwell just outran him and beat him to the corner. Bagwell now with three touchdowns on the season. 21, I believe, now for his career at California. Dumb will hold for Fowler. This kick much better. And up and through. 21 for California. Zero for Mansfield. 3.08 left to go. And a first half that's seen a lot of Vulcan offense. 
and some good California defense giving them this 21 point lead. And Paul, if uh, as a wise man once said, strike hard, strike first, and show no mercy. And that's what California's doing right now. It's, lo it's looking a lot like last year's game, Ben, except for no Mansfield block punt early in the first quarter. Well, the way their offense has looked, Paul, the block punt for a touchdown might be the only way they get anything on the board right now. Well, Man Mansfield has been a struggling program over the years. I mean, in the four years I've been here, they had one good season. I believe it was my sophomore year. They they started out 6-1. I don't know how they finished out that year. Ago, yeah. it was two years ago, yeah. And, and they had beaten California up here 14-7 to in a very close game. Yeah, that game, a game really California should have won. A horrible call on a goal line situation. A couple fumbles deep in <coughs> Mansfield territory when California was knocking on the door. And lo and behold, Mansfield escaped with that one touchdown lead. Well, if I remember correctly, there were a lot of games that year that Cal should have won. Yeah, that was pretty much the story of that season for the Balkans. But they came right back with some new players last year and, and showed what they can do. And this year is supposed to be the year. Anytime a team, re quote, rebuilds, that fourth year is always the key. And this is the fourth year for the Balkans. Ronnie Montgomery, who's getting tired of chasing Fowler's kicks, takes this one at the three. And he is caught and then wrapped up at the 22. Good pressure by California. Lloyd Price on special teams. Also there, I believe, was Brandon Lombardi and Travis Williams, number 21. Yeah, good job by California. Fowler was doing a, did a much better job with that kick. He got it high in the air and kicked it further towards the sideline, making, as you said, Montgomery have to chase it down and giving the uh, special teams a little more time to get down there. And Travis Williams, another one of those transfers that we talked to, a sophomore from Tol University of Toledo out of Aliquippa High School. Coming in 6'3", 205 pounds, a backup to Jared Dumb at strong safety. California shifts some defenders around. McNeil is going to get the ball. The fake on the reverse fools nobody. Justin Taravisky, one of the first there for California, the 6'5", junior out of Wheeling. And another second down and long. And this has been a problem for Mansfield, among other things. Second and long, third and long, seemingly all quarter long. And Cal doing a good job again this year of holding Pooh Bear McNeil. I believe he's never, he hasn't gotten more than two yards on a carry yet this game. He'll be in the gun next to Brandon Hunt. Here comes the blitz from Gary Butler. And here's a weird play, and Butler got up in the chest, but McNeil catches the pass, and he will pick up a first down. Ball's on the ground. Cal saying they have it. And the referees agree. California football, McNeil had it come yeah, loose around the 40-yard line, and coming up with it, I see 58, Brian Moore. And Moore has had a hell of a first quarter, and the Vulcans look to add to this 20-point lead, still with 2.14 left to play in the first quarter. We're already doing, doing a very good job of adding to that legacy of California linebackers. As we said, Odie and Anishka were two in the past that were very well known. T.J. Carden as well. T.J. Carden, and now we have Lloyd Price and Brian Moore. And uh, they've had some pretty good teachers in front of them. When you have players like that working behind them, you're going to learn a lot of things. And the Vulcans knocking again. With great field position at the mountain near 40. Rogerio out of the gun. And he's going to go to the air again. Blitz coming from the backside, dumps it off, and makes the toss out to Garner. His third snag of the game inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. And another first down. Rogerio, robot like back there in the pocket, just finding receiver after receiver. And he's spreading the ball around too. Yeah, he's 8 for 10 on the game so far. Three receptions by Gardner, one by Huddleston, two by Force, and one by Palshaw. And actually, I believe uh, Antoine Bagwell's reception yes. as well. The, the long touchdown to start. The scoring for California is a win is really picked up. Rogerio with a day and a half to throw this football. He's got to get ribbon and wide open is forced in the middle of the field at the 15, and he'll be tripped at the 12. But Joe Rogerio had about 10 minutes to throw that football. The offensive line giving him all time. And if you're Mansfield, how do you lose Nate Force? I don't know. Nate Force, a big man, as you said, and he was sitting all by himself down around the 15 yard line there. Good job by Rogerio to. to, to you take advantage of that time, roll around, and find the open receiver. And I'm going to say this. I realize Mansfield's not IUP or Edinburgh, but Force, if California keeps using him like that, he's going to 50, 60 catches by the end of this year using his size. Ruggiero's got to get rid of it again. He's just going to heave it for the corner. 
Huddleston was in the area, but it appeared that Ruggiero was just trying to get rid of the ball. Good pressure on the play by number 34, Keith Slazak. Good name. Good name. Uh, and it'll be an incomplete pass. Second down coming up, I believe only the third or fourth incompletion of the game for Ruggiero. If he would have known that Huddleston was over there, they might have had a touchdown because yeah. Huddleston was open in the back corner of that end zone. Well, Huddleston makes up a lot of room really fast as well. And this attempted pass, the wide receiver screen that I absolutely love Cal running. Yeah. One hops, Nate Force, and it'll be a third down situation. One of the rare third downs that we've had for the Vulcans. Yeah, they had that wide receiver screen set up pretty well. Nate Force was open on the outside. He had, I believe it was Brandon Jackson out there to block for him but uh, Ruggiero's pass just fell a little bit short. Jackson, who might be the fastest California receiver, hasn't caught a pass yet today. Had three last game against Fairmont. And nobody is covering Nate Force, and the coaching staff for Mansfield is hollering at the team. And now, timeout called. I believe California, no, Mansfield's gonna call a timeout as they were totally discombobulated on the defensive side of the ball. 125 left to play first quarter. The Vulcans lead Mansfield 21 to zero and are threatening with a third down from the Mountaineer 12. Yeah, as you said, <coughs> excuse me, the, the coaching staff saw that there was no one on 8-4, so they were yelling and someone eventually did move over, but I believe that the, the mismatch was, yeah, it was a, a big mismatch for Mansfield, and so the coach just called a timeout, a smart decision by the coach. First timeout used by either team in this game. And we are still in the first quarter. California connecting on several big plays. We've seen Lombardi with a touchdown. We've seen Bagwell with a long touchdown. And who had the other touchdown, Paul? Um, I believe it was, um, well, I didn't mark that one down. I'm trying to keep my stats here. <laughs> I'm not used to keeping stats and uh, <laughs> the wind, game at the same time. The wind has picked up here <laughs> in Norman Stadium. Yeah, we're on top of the press box here. and, it, and it, I mean, it, it's a beautiful day out, but it, it does get windy up here on it's top of this gusty. building. We got everything taped down, and sometimes that it doesn't even work. Bagwa has two touchdowns. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he rushed for one. And received one. And received one. Oh, I do have it marked. I just missed it. And if somebody has my two deep down on the ground, they can well, more I, I have one, it. actually. Here's a backup if you want it. <laughs> you hold on to it. <laughs> I can't be trusted right now. It's Coach John Lockhart's out on this. Uh, he's actually out on the field, and the officials talking to him. Well, you know, I was just thinking it's too bad there's not a mercy rule in college football because we may see that happen here today. Still a long way. We're still in the first quarter. Now 49 seconds left. I believe two weeks ago, Cal had also jumped out to a big 21-0 lead early in that game against Fairmont. Before, and they really slowed up in the second half of that game, we, perhaps not wanting to, to show them up by running up the score or anything. It was meet the new Vulcans day at Adams and seeing as we saw a lot of new players in the second half. Fairmont only able to put a couple field goals on the board. I'm not sure what the delay here is. With all the transfers that Cal has, they, they could pretty much play Division One football. Probably. Exactly. And you look at their, the players on the field right now, you got Huddleston, a transfer from Purdue, Bagwell, who was originally at Nebraska, big as the clock is the problem, apparently. Josh Stewart, who is a transfer from West Virginia. You got Nate Force, a transfer from West Virginia. How about Stewart adding him to this offensive line? 6'7", 315. Mm. You put him next to McCutcheon, that's, that's some earth movers on the left side of the offensive line. Not that Bagwell needs a whole lot of help. Yeah. As you said, McCutcheon is a big man himself at 275. You got Zaznanski. He's the he's the smallest at 260, the center, which that usually is the smallest position. And he that may be the best center in this conference. Yeah, too. he's very good. He's a senior, 6'1". Um, then you have Derek Catris in the right guard, 6'3", 280 pounds. And the right tackle, Carl J, a senior, 6'5", 302 pounds. So very, very big guys up front for California. And they do eat well. I see them all the time in Gold <laughs> Rush. Well, Catris played a lot last year and Stewart, the, the new player. So you really have four. And now we have word that they do the clock problems. The officials will keep the time on the field for the rest of the quarter, which our estimation is about 45 seconds or so. But uh, we'll find out when you do. Yeah. Third down and 10. The ball's at the 12. Vulcans can get a first down here, just inside the three. Four receiver look. Here comes the blitz. Quick dump over Watch Huddleston down. for six. The Vulcans picking apart Mansfield. Coach Mike Keller's offensive game plan working to perfection. 
The Vulcans for six, 27 nothing over Mansfield. Well, I'm not sure what Mansfield's defensive scheme is, but when, when Cal's been spreading them out, they, they have no one in the middle of the field. I don't, they need to either leave, bring an extra safety in and leave him back or whatever, but Huddleston just beat his guy and slanted right up the middle for an easy score. And that's what you can't do against Cal. You put in extra backs, you got Bagel in the backfield, he gets through that first layer, he's gone. Fowler on for the point after, and he is good, 28 nothing. About 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter, and the Balkans already with four touchdowns up on the board, two passing, two running, to, and uh, the route looks like it's on from Van Norman Stadium. Well, you know, something that we have become used to, especially I know I have here at Cal California University, is the Vulcans come out usually every season very, very well prepared. They come out, they win their first few games, they look sharp, and then it's it's either injuries or it's penalties or something happens. Yeah, it, and, it they, and they, like the season just falls apart usually. But well, hopefully they can keep this keep this up. I know they got Edinburgh a little bit earlier on the schedule than usual this mm -hmm. year. They have uh, Shippensburg the week after them, and then IEP is at the end of the year. Those are the teams that they've had trouble beating in the past. And, and California, the best way I can describe it is they've self-destructed over the last couple of years. They've had all the talent, especially last year, which I thought would have been their best chance to win. But again, with Ruggiero going down and then just all sorts of troubles from there on in, this has to be their year. They have their best young talent. I think they've had Ruggiero appears to be healthy. Bagwell's in his final season. You got some good re good receivers. Last play of the period. And yeah, and until Bagwell had come in, they even felt confident in the running back position with Robert Calhoun. Yeah. And now with Lombardi coming in from Purdue, you have two very well backs that are still going to be in the system behind Bagwell when he's gone. And in this conference, IUP is not as strong as they were. They've had a little bit of problems. Edinburgh, who was picked first in this conference, they've had even bigger problems. They've already lost a game this year. And uh, it, it could be a wide open season. A good test will be next week for California. We'll talk about that in a little bit as Montgomery scampers back to his two to take this. This should be the last play of the quarter. And he is able to pick his way through the blocking across the 30 before he's brought down near the 35. And another little bit of pushing and shoving. It looked like 28 Dodson over there. Yeah, I believe that's who it was. Mike Dodson, the freshman, 6'2", 215 pounds out of Waldorf, Maryland, Thomas Stone High School. But another thing that comes, Ben, with, with uh, building your program up like the Vulcans have done, bringing in transfers and stuff, is you make a name for yourself and you become a, a name that high school players, good high school players, are going to talk about and be like, hey, I want to go to that school, and that's how you develop a program that's good for years and years and years. Apparently we are still in the first quarter. Hunt remains in, actually has a new quarterback. No, actually, no, that's Hunt, Hunt's Hunt, excuse back me. in, yeah. Hunt is in all kinds of trouble, and he is met by five white jerseys and driven into the Brandon turf. Hunt. And if you want to stay in the game, that's now not the way you're going to do it. Taravisky will get the sack and an injured player for Mansfield at their 37 yard line. They've already had Looks one like player come off the field with the injury. Garofalo. Garofalo, who has the who represents the only first down for Mansfield in this quarter, appears very shaken up. It's a loss of two on the play. It's gonna be second and 12, and if what I heard is correct, that should be the first quarter. Well, the refs are keeping the time down the field, and we don't really have a, a clock up here that we can tell. As The scoreboard is set to, for the second quarter to begin, but until we get a signal from the refs, we're not quite sure when the first quarter is going to end. He, I think he's signaling to the Mansfield coaches right now about how much time is left. Possibly five seconds, four seconds. I'm not quite sure what he's I'm not real to tell sure. him. We don't have our ref mic today, which is a real disappointment to me. And there's a lot of hand gesturing. I took sign language last semester at Cal, but I don't know what he's trying to say. I think out he just there. gave the roughing the passer signal or wind down the clock. He's saying 54 seconds now left to play in the first quarter. Okay. Paul Garofalo, ladies and gentlemen. Paul and Gar Garofalo. Garofalo appears to be a knee problem as well. Yeah, he's, he's limping pretty roughly on that. Uh, is right. It looks like his right knee is is hurt. I can sympathize, and a and a very stout young man at 5'5", 180. That's a lot of pressure on the knee ligaments there. 
was totally away from the play. Might have just ran into somebody, may have clipped the knee of somebody just running by. And the clock says 54 seconds. For the time being, I'm going to trust it. It's going to be second down and 12. Brandon Hunt has been ineffective, to say the least, at quarterback. Well, between the two quarterbacks, Brandon Hunt, I've been trying... I think I have it right when they switched quarterbacks, but Brandon Hunt is one for seven. John Henschold, however, was three for five when he was in the game. Play fake, and here comes the blitz. Price with another shot, and the catch is made. It's only going to be about Brandon a two-yard gain. Davis. Looks like Josh Kemp was over there. Rodney Davis on the reception, and it will be only a gain of three. It'll be third and nine, and the clock is winding correctly now. It's at 20 seconds. Well, so far, Mansfield has only completed... They're down and about eight. Well, they've completed two passes to running backs. Or three, excuse me, counting the one to Garofalo. And a few to uh, Ozzie Mathis and Matt Hildebrand, the receivers. So the backs and receivers have equal number of catches. Now, if I was Mansfield, I'd just let this clock run out and regroup for a third down. But they're going to snap it as the first quarter ends. Hunt's going to go down the field. He's hit as he throws. Looks like Tara Viskier Rose got a hand on his arm. Wobbles incomplete. It's going to be fourth down for Mansfield, but the first quarter does come to an end, and California picks up where they left off last year against Mansfield, totally dominating the first quarter of action. California 28, Mansfield 0. We'll be back with the second quarter of action on CU TV. The second quarter begins from Van Norman Stadium and Mansfield in a familiar punt situation. As they trail 28 to nothing at California High snap. And Fields will get this kick off. Good spiraling kick drives Huddleston back. No field on the run at the 20, reverses his field. Needs some help and gets a couple blocks. Still on it, so he gets a crushing block by Jared Dom. Cuts across the 30, he's got a lot of green. 40, Watch out. 45, he's got the punter to beat. And he's gonna go. Mark Huddleston with a return of 85 yards. No flags. Wow. Six for the Vulcans. It was an 85-yard return, but I swear he ran about 115 on that play as he drifted well back to, to receive that punt. And then he, he ran all the way to the far side of the field first, picking up a few blocks before cutting it back all the way to the near side and taking it into the end zone. And Jared Dumb threw a heck of a block on that wide side to spring him, and that is one of the longest touch or longest punt returns I think California's ever had. I'm going to look that up. But now a 34 to nothing game. California scores on the first play of the second quarter. Cal needs to be careful too. I saw one of the referees motioning to them to make sure they stayed on the sideline. A little, a little bit of a celebration going on with a lot of the players after that big punt return. And of course you're going to be happy on a play like that. But California needs to, you know, keep keep their focus. I mean, they have a 34 nothing, 35 nothing lead in this game. They need to not get any stupid penalties. And Fowler misses the second point after oh, of the game. 34 nothing. The only thing that really has not gone right for California is the kicking game so far. And those are the simplest plays, the point after. But Mark Huddleston, who has come on to California in the last two years and really ignited a kick return and punt return situation that has been non-existent in the past several years. And that return there indication, his I believe his first return as a California player for a touchdown. Well, it should be the second. Yes. Last year there was a return. That's why I said I the, believe. The famous, the famous return against Shippensburg on a kickoff, which would have put California back in that game against Ship last year. Uh, I, actually, I believe that was the homecoming game as well. Oh, there's a lot of things going wrong. An inadvertent game. whistle was the call, which pushed it back to the, I believe, the 15-yard line or something, and then California was unable to score after that. Huddleston averaged 13 yards of return coming into this game. Last year averaged 8.6, did not have a, a punt return for a touchdown. Yeah, California has really been lacking in that department since the loss of um, number four, R.J. Yeah, Abercrombie. Abercrombie. He was, he was a good return man. It was all conferences last year here in California before his tragic passing. But Huddleston, the junior transfer from Purdue, is the wind really kicking up yeah, now. Yeah, you can hear it. I remember a day like this at Edinburgh where I nearly flew off Sox Harrison Stadium and Fowler is kicking into the wind. 
and this will go out of bounds and his woes continue and Mansfield's going to start first and 10 from their own 35. 14-32 look to play here in the first half the Balkans 34 Mansfield 0. Well an unfortunate kick it with the wind it just rolled out of bounds but Cal's defense I'm sure is not worried they've been do they've been holding their own against this Mansfield offense all game long. Mansfield could start at the Cal 20 I don't think it would matter to the Cal defense the way they've been playing. As I take a look, there's no list for punt return, longest punt return in a, in a game. The longest kickoff return, 98 yards by Perry Kemp, former NFLer and a relative of Josh Kemp for California. And Hunt on first down. Gives the ball up to McNeil. McNeil, and McNeil picks up four yards, but Paul, you're down 34 points. Graham McNeil's probably your best player on the team. A couple yards up the middle here and there aren't going to get you back in this ball game anytime soon. No, but if you're Mansfield, though, I mean, what what do you do? Your passing attack has been non-existent today against this California Vulcan defense. I mean, the secondary for California has played very well early in the season. You got number 13, Chris Glass as well as number two, Jason Cook, two very, very strong defenders on the outside. Hunt's gonna throw this one into the ground, about three yards short of Rodney Davis. Pressure by Dumb and number 56 for California, Chet Henderson, getting his first playing time of the year after starting a few games last year so out of Washington High School. And it will now be third and long yet again for the Mountaineers. The one thing I don't like to see is right after Hunt threw that ball, he saw it was going bad and went into the ground. He just put his head down in shame like, I can't believe I just did that. As a quarterback of the team, you need to be the leader. You need to be like, okay, that was a bad pass, my bad, but keep your head up and go out and throw a good pass the next time. Hunter Jr., he's going to fire this one, and Chris Glass hits his man right at the point of the reception. Rodney Davis came down with it, but he's going to be about three yards short, and that pump to me makes no sense throwing a six yard pattern when you need eight yards. And another punt situation for poor Mark, poor Brandon Fields, who's uh, probably gonna get cramp in that knee before the night's over. Well, bad teams are bad for a reason, and it's because of plays like that. When, when you're a team that is not playing well, not being successful, you're gonna make mistakes such as throwing a third down pass short of the first down. This is a good punt by Fields, and Huddleston's gonna try and make magic again. Same spot from the 15, how wow. you doing? Kemp with a huge block, and a scuffle going on there. Flag is down, it's gonna come back. And Huddleston able to get up to the 40, as Ronnie Montgomery and Josh Kemp John at each other. There's gonna be a holding or a block in the back coming back. Well, finally an official is seeing those two players drawing each other, and he's going over to let them know, hey, you know, guys, cool it down a bit. I mean, of course, when you get leveled, a very clean block by Josh, a clean block, excuse me, by Josh Kemp, but when you get leveled like that, you're not gonna be happy, but Montgomery needs to keep his cool and understand that was a perfectly legal hit, and he, he doesn't need a stupid penalty from his team right now, because they're already down 34 nothing. And we just mentioned Josh Kemp, the, the relation of Perry Kemp, playing two ways for California. He's, he's on the special teams, he's moved to defensive back. We've also seen him line up a wide receiver this year. A great athlete, and, and California's just hitting out there. They're, they're looking for black helmets out there to hit the red jerseys. But this holding penalty is going to back them up to their own 15 where Huddleston field the ball. You know, Ben, Cal has a 34 nothing lead. There's 13 minutes to go in the second quarter. I mean, when, when, when can you just stop. I mean, you can't stop Call playing. Off the dogs. So yeah, but I mean, you can't stop playing. What do you do as a team? You don't want to, you don't want to rack it up to 100 points and look like you're trying to show someone up here. But still, you don't want to stop playing with your team. What do you do in a situation like this? Is that Bagwell straight ahead for about seven yards, and now he's John Bagwell's got to shut his mouth before he gets in any more trouble. And he'll pick up about six. But as we air this game, by the time everybody watches this game at home, Paul, they'll know the scores from the rest of the conference. But we're hearing IEP losing to Westchester 14-0. I wasn't sure who Shippensburg was playing, but they're losing by seven. Bloomsburg, I believe, they're trailing 14-7. California right. is hearing these scores. And these are teams, they're traditional powerhouse. They have to be happy with the way they're playing. Looking right now, they're gonna come out of this game 2-0. and As Bagwell tries to spin his way towards the sticks, he's gonna get maybe another yard or two. It'll be third down and about one coming up. 
as uh, Cal going a little more conservative here, trying to use some clock up. Yeah, as you mentioned with Ship and IUP losing so far this afternoon, I mean, perhaps it is the beginning of a possible downfall for those teams. I mean, as you said, they've been powerhouses in the conference for as long as I've been here, if not even longer. Oh, it's much longer than that, yeah. I mean, you, you figure it can't Again, last forever, but you wouldn't expect to see teams like IUP who go possibly 0-2 to start the season. 11.43 now on a running clock in the first half. And a two tight end look with Bagwell as a single receiver. Tony Hoskin into the game for the first time this year. Number 87 lines up at wide receiver. And it looks like Ruggiero is going to go straight ahead, moves the pile. And an extra pile on. He's going to easily Ruggiero. pick up the first down. And definitely a little chippy out there on the field now. It seems like every scrum, every pile, there's a little pushing and shoving. The referees and officials got to get control of this game, or it's you hate what to see what Steve? might happen out there. Providing but a first down for California is they'll continue to move the chains. Well, if you're Mansfield, I mean, down by so many points, I'm sure you get to the point where you almost don't even want to be out there. And you just, any little thing is going to make you frustrated. But you just have to learn to, you know, keep your focus and, and c keep that, that frustration under control. And if you're their defense, they've been out on the field seemingly forever. I'm looking at one of their little middle linebackers. That's five Turner. He's got his hands on his hips, basically staying straight up, looking very winded. And that'll win to somebody real fast. Bagwell straight ahead before he's wrapped up by Ryan Kasich. Ran into his own man, or he might have been able to pick up another Bagwell big chunk of yardage. Okay. But he'll get 17 Ryan. or so there. Okay. And he'll tackle. have a first down at the Vulcan 46-yard line. Well, Bagwell, 183 yards two weeks ago in the Cal California home opener. I believe he's had 11 or 12 straight 100-yard rushing games for California. There's only been one game in his career where he has not had a 100-yard game. I cannot recall which game that was. But uh, that's basically automatic. And he spins at the line, gets wow. a couple big blocks, and he'll get over midfield into Mansfield territory at their 46-yard line. Josh Stewart just annihilated his man on that left side. And then some more pushing and shoving down there, this time involving offensive lineman Derek Catris. And it'll be second down and about two to go for the Vulcans. Antoine Bagwell's just a special player, Ben. That's, that's, he, a, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, he's him. one of those players that you just, you get to watch him play, and, and, and it is a privilege for us to be able to see him for last season and, and all of this season. Unfortunately, he will be gone after this year. But just to have an opportunity to watch someone with his talent. I mean, he's someone you could be possibly seeing on Sundays in the future. Stole the words right out of my mouth. Robert Calhoun's gonna spell him on this play, second and two in Mountaineer territory. Ruggiero's been almost automatic at quarterback. The running game has been phenomenal. The offensive line, superb as always. And Ruggiero showing a little something more there on the draw off sides. He's gonna heave the ball downfield. And this pass a little off the mark. He had Garner and I believe that was Brandon Jackson in the area, but a little miscommunication there. Rosario, I believe, thought he had the offside flag, but nothing thrown on the field, and it'll be third down and two. Rosario has a good arm. He definitely does, and he had Hoskin down the field, but as you said, just a mis miscommunication. Hoskin kind of turned inside, and Rosario threw it out. Something, I mean, those, those plays happen sometimes. Hoskin, the lone senior receiver on this team. Number 87, 6'1", 195 pounds senior, Columbus, Ohio. Did not play last week. Most famous for that infamous... Inbounds, um, not inbounds. Yeah, yeah, against IUP a couple years ago. Rogerio dumps over the hill. Nate Force is there, easily picking up the first down inside the 40 Rogerio before Montgomery wraps him up to the 39. Another first down for the Vulcans. Well, Nate Force is quickly becoming a force for for this Vulcan offense. Ruggieri has gone to him four times so far this afternoon. And all four times, Nate Force has come up with the ball. And Force, with, with D1 size and skills playing here in a smaller setting, really showing those off. A great athlete. I believe he played basketball as well. Earl Islands, his brother, is a currently a receiver for the Mustangs. And... Just showing off a whole lot of his ability, really getting into the offense after just being highlighted, if you will, last week, or last game, I should say, against Fairmont. Under nine and a half to play, first half. Empty backfield for 
I believe that's Matt Humbert, Humbert in at quarterback. And he's going to run the quarterback draw, and he's going to have himself a first down. Speaking of fellow Mustangs, the Laurel Highlands product, who played quite a bit last year after the injury to Ruggiero, picks up 14 yards and a first down. Humbert is another one of those quarterbacks who he has a good arm, but he can also run the ball as well. I know last year, as you said, came in and played very well in uh, Ruggiero's absence with the injury, went three and one as a starter. As a freshman too. As a, yeah, a freshman. And uh, I know I remember one game against uh, Slippery Rock, he ran about 60 some yards for a touchdown. And the offense Laurel Highlands ran, and, and being from the area, I've had the chance to watch them. They run pretty much the same kind of offense Cal does. Calhoun takes out of the backfield, and he'll get maybe two yards. Humbert brought to the turf by 99, West Bear the third. But he was lucky enough to get that out to Calhoun, who picks up, as I mentioned, about they're going to give him about three yards. It'll be second and seven. That was Calhoun's first rushing attempt of the game. Calhoun was brought in here a couple years ago to be the uh, successor for four-year back Wes Clemens. Wes Cates, then, too, as well. Wes Cates, as well, yes. And then uh, Bagwell come in, the transfer from Nebraska, kind of pushed Calhoun back on the depth chart, but he's still someone the Vulcans will rely upon. I believe he had 65, 70 yards last week. Bagwell in there on second and five. Humbert under center, and he'll give the ball to Bagwell. He'll try that left side, and he's got another hole, and he's got another six, but there's a flag down, and this one's going to come back. Catris was over there, and it looks like he's going to get called for holding. Well, it looks like we'll probably be seeing Humbert and maybe Cecil Howard for the rest of this ball game. With the, the big lead, you don't want to risk another injury to Ruggiero, especially after coming off that horrible injury last season. Unofficially, Ruggiero, uh, we're trying to figure this out. 11 of 16, two touchdowns, and picked up a couple big runs as well. It's not bad for a quarter and a half's work. No, not at all. Grant, it wasn't the five touchdown performance last year, and this will be holding against the Vulcans. They'll back up California 10 yards, and they'll now be second down and 15. Ball should move back to around the 30 yard line. Ball spotted on the 20-yard line. Uh, I scratch that second and five now, spot oh, a foul. Perry Ivory is checked in the game for the Vulcans. Another transfer from Toledo for Cherry High School. Same five, as Josh 10, 175 Camp. pounds. Looks to figure in California's kick return game, but the Vulcans haven't had a chance to return a kick yet today. Humbert's going to throw, and he looks for Ivory, who does the splits, but is unable to pick that ball up, and it's going to be third and five. The first incompletion, what seems like forever for California. for Perry Ivory. Third down. And Ivory's another one of those D1 transfers Paul brought in, and he's an interesting story actually spent about four years between his last high school game and his first collegiate game. Did not play at Toledo before coming here, but uh, doesn't seem like he's missed a beat as he's fit in nicely to the Vulcan return game. Had a 40-yard kick return, and now uh, getting a chance of getting a couple snaps at receiver. That is something I did not know, Ben mm -hmm. Slezak. I'm just full of it. You, <laughs> information. You have all the information. Humbert's going to go out of the gun with about eight minutes left to go in the first half. Step up and fires to his big tight end, Baker, makes the reception at the 15, and he's going to have the first down. DeMond Baker had a touchdown reception last game against Fairmont State, and you talk about a target, 6'7", 265 pounds out of Cincinnati, Ohio, with a little bit of agility and showing the hands there. What a weapon that is, especially in those close yardage goal line situations. Yeah, and you know, something I've always talked about is I've always felt that Cal has never utilized yeah. their tight ends enough. I mean, they've had good tight ends over the year, over the years with Robin Brown and Matt Rado. And um, now perhaps they're gonna finally start to use them. And they're gonna use them again. Baker makes this snag at about the seven. Gets inside the five to the four. Nice play fake Humbert. by Humbert. Again, and it'll be Baker. second down and Baker about the the second down, about one to go. Picks up nine there. The and I mentioned Humbert running basically the same offense at Laurel Highlands. Same situation. They had a pretty good running back and they second split down, their receivers and out. The and Humbert's able to do that now. And another Laurel Highlands quarterback, Antoine Clock, is now playing defensive back for the Vulcans. A little more info for you. Second down, they'll call three. And the give to the left side. Bagwell knifes his way through, is stood up near the goal line, and they'll mark him down at the one, but it will be first and goal coming up for California. Good hit by the Mountaineers there, preventing at least momentarily the touchdown run from Antoine Bagwell. Well, only Bagwell's ninth carry of the game. 
Um, but they really haven't needed to go to him that much because they've been successful through the air. And with the amount of weapons that California has, they, they try to utilize everyone as much as they can. I mean, they've had, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven players touched the ball already in this game. Bagwell that 51-yard reception as well for a touchdown. Calhoun the single back. And he's going to get it. Tries the left side. Up in the air. Fumble. And we've seen that here at this stadium once or twice. And Mansfield appears to have come out of the pile with the ball. As it looked like helmet to the football. That thing popped right up in the air. And the Mountaineers will take over inside their five. And I was here a couple years ago. And similar things have happened. Score was a lot closer then, but California unable to capitalize after a nice looking drive that started all the way back at their own 15. Yeah, it was Matt Humbert leading the team down the field for most of the way. I mean, it was a good opportunity for him to get in and get some uh, game experience for the first time this season. Unfortunately for Calhoun, the ball just knocked right out of his hands. Just popped right up in the air. And now a chance for McNeil off the left side on first down, and he looks like he will get at least 10 and another first down. If I'm remembering correctly, that's only the second first down of the day for Mansfield. I believe you're correct. The first was on a pass reception by Paul Garofalo, who then left the game with an injury. I'm not sure if he's come back yet. I haven't seen him on the field. And now this one with the run by Pooh Bear McNeil. But going back to Calhoun's fumble, I mean, he's not a player that's going to fumble very often anyway. He usually has good hands. Um, so you know, you know that when he does fumble, it's often not because of something that he did, but because of something that the defense did. And California does do a good job protecting the ball. McNeil, not Again, this much McNeil on that carry. Roy 44, Price Mike Harrington the among others there. Saw Lloyd Price as well. And it's going to be second down it's and eight with yards. now six minutes left to play. Second and you know, you have to think for California, I mean, you're going to see your, your, uh, your backup come in earlier on offense you will on defense because the defense you still want to you still want to um, not allow Mansfield to just drive down the field on you easily so you want to at least for the rest of the second half probably you'll see the still the, the first team defense out on the field Ooh, Lloyd well I believe that was Jared Dunn just got upended and that pass incomplete intended for Tyrone Robinson and Hengehold just coming up a little short on that. California now with 11 touchdowns scored already in the season in six quarters. Wow. And California only with one, tur that is only the second turnover of the year as well. Ruggiero threw an interception against Fairmont and that's it. The defense came up with four turnovers in the first week, three interceptions and a fumble recovery. Henchold quickly, now running for his life, gets away from Price, dumps it off to his man out on the flat, and making the reception was number 16, Matthew Hillerbrand, 6'2 junior out of York, yeah, Pennsylvania, Henshold, Dallas Town High School, and very close to the markers on third down. Very close to a first down, and Matt has it. And it is a first down, so two straight first downs for Mansfield, trying to get something going here late in the first half, now five and a half to play in quarter number two. Well, Mansfield's gonna go with the hurry up offense once again, Ben. And one thing I've noticed is that they have been able to move the ball a bit better with Henschold under center than they have with um, with Brandon Hunt calling the plays. Henschold only a freshman out of Lake Murray, Florida. And they're gonna dump it out to the wing, picking up a little bit more is Hildebrand, maybe three more yards, but Again, Paul, I said after a couple McNeil carries, you're down by five touchdowns, essentially. Three and four yard nickel and dime plays aren't gonna get you back in this football game. No, not at all, Ben. I mean, I mean, I don't even know what to do. I mean, you're down 34 nothing. You just you just wanna get some scores on the board. Hope, I mean, the, the only mindset to have in my, my frame of mind would be, well, if they did it to us, then we can do it right back to them. Henschold in trouble again, scrambling. And he's got the tuck and run, and he wisely gets out of bounds as Chris Glass was lining him up. Glass number 13, the freshman out of New Brighton High School Freedom, or New Brighton Freedom High School, shuts him down, but it looks like it's going to be enough for another first down. Yeah, Glass is a very good player on this California defense. He was redshirted last year, and last week, uh, they failed to inform us of his uniform number change. He switched, I forget what number he had originally. He was originally. 28 last week. 28, and, they and he switched to 13. He played 
just about the whole game and played very well against Fairmont State. Screen pass, trying to set it up. Andre Williams in pursuit, dumb. Just Dex hinge hold. And the reception is made by Tyrone Robinson Ooh. as he tries to get something going. Gets up to his own 39-yard line before Mike Harrington put him on the turf. But Andre Williams was in hot pursuit, and Jared Dumb cleaned up Henschold. Well, it's, it's been a rough day for quarterbacks for the Mountaineers. Yeah, well, Henschold, it was, it was a smart thing for him not to throw that the first chance he had because Dumb was actually there to intercept the ball. And then when he faked, faked the, um, the throw to... Tyron Robinson, dumb charged in and then laid the hit on Henschold. Second down and eight under four to play. Cal showing blitz. Here they come. Price coming. Gary Butler right in pursuit and a nice job. Over the top. Was that complete? No, it was incomplete. Pass intended for Davis. The ref on the near side of the field, he had a good angle and he, he called it incomplete right away. Glass was there. Josh Kemp was there. It'll now be third and eight. Well, Henschel so far six for ten in this ball game. He's been the quarterback on this entire drive, and they've probably moved the ball more here than they have at any other point in the football game. Yeah, they've doubled their amount of first downs just on this drive. Four receiver look. McNeil stays in to pick up the blitz, and it's fired and completed to Robinson. He's going to have another first down before he's brought down by Chet Henderson. But near midfield, the Mountaineers pick up another first down. And you can hear the cheer from the Mansfield crowd as they are uh, excited to see the good effort by Tyron Robinson. He caught the ball about two yards short, made one defender missed, and drug another defender for a couple yards to pick up the first down. That's Brian Moore on the stop. My apologies. Now three and a half to play. Henschold's going to fire the ball down the field. He's got his man open, and making the grab at the 20-yard line was Ozzie Mathis. Glass lost him, and the biggest play of the game by far for Mansfield gives them a first and 10 at the Vulcan 14. Yeah, I was watching Glass on that play. He saw the pass coming. It was in the air for a long time, but he, he was confused with looking for the ball and looking for the, the receiver at the same time and just was not able to get back there in time to break up the play, but good job, however, getting back and making the tackle and not allowing Mathis to perhaps score a touchdown. 35 yards, Jermaine Moy came over to help out. And the deepest Mansfield has had the ball all afternoon. Henschel's gonna throw again, or at least attempt to throw, and he swings it out wide, and a roughing the passer coming up as Avery Good looks like he got caught with his hand in the jar. Avery Good, the sophomore, 6'2", 270 pounds out of McKeesport, oh, excuse me, McKeesport, Pennsylvania. A lot of Vulcan players come from McKeesport. And he is getting an earful from Coach Conway, the defensive co co coordinator on this team as he quickly finds himself a seat on the bench after that penalty. He'll be first and goal coming up after a half the distance penalty. As you can hear that wind here on top of Van Norman Field. The wind is here, the sun is here. There's the yellow bees jackets here. are here. Um, failed, I didn't know we were gonna be on top of the uh, press box here and failed to bring my sunblock, so I'm already getting a nice little red layer over top of my skin. We're gonna have a timeout on the field. The Vulcans will use their first timeout. Each team now with two remaining here in the first half as we're at about the three and a half minute mark of the second quarter. California comfortably ahead of Mansfield, 34 nothing, but knocking right on the door are the Mountaineers after a couple big plays led by freshman quarterback, John Hengehold. Well, Mansfield for the first time in this game really got a drive going and it all started with the fumble by Robert Calhoun as he was attempting to score at the uh, Mansfield one yard line. A Mansfield defender and put his helmet on the ball to knock it loose, Mansfield recovered Covered, and has then proceeded to drive all the way down the field, which is where they're at now with a, a uh, first and ten from the or first and goal from the seven. So hopefully they can get you know some points on the board here, give themselves a little more confidence going into halftime. And it looks like they're going to come out in a four receiver look with McNeil, who has not been very active. Maybe 25 yards, rough estimate. And 2.57 officially left to go here in the sec second quarter, first half. And some more discussion going on as the referee's talking with Tyron Robinson, number 14, a Bishop, Bishop McDevitt product out of the Philadelphia area. 
as a school I know very well. I, growing up watching Souderton High School play, my hometown high school, they played Bishop McDevitt just about every year. And now it appears we're ready to go. See if the Balkans can make something happen here on their goal line stand as Mansfield did against California. And it looks like Henschel trying to check out of it. And he's going back into the shotgun. There's still nine seconds on the play clock. And he changes things up. California is showing blitz. And they'll back off. Little pump fake by Henschold, and now he rolls to his right, and he's just going to heave it to the end zone, and Moy doing a nice job of breaking up that pass intended for Rodney Davis. I don't think Davis would have came down in bounds, but Moy, another transfer from West Virginia University, 6'3 sophomore out Rochester, breaks it up, and it'll now be second and goal. Yeah, it appeared as though Henschel was going to try to uh, give a hard count and get the Vulcans to jump off sides. However, they did not. They held their ground. And then he looked to the sideline to get the play call from the coach. Good job by the California defense maintaining their coverage and not all rushing at the quarterback as he was scrambling. I think you got to give McNeil at least one shot here from the seven yard line. They're going to swing it out. They attempted to the swing out, but Teravisky was there. Teravisky fell down. McNeil with a block, and Henschold's going to run out of bounds near the five. And it'll be third down and goal to go from the five. But. Nice job by Tara Vizky out there preventing that little swing pass to Pooh Bear McNeil. And I, I believe when you said give McNeil a shot, you were me, me, you meant by the run. However, they did attempt to pass to him, but it was unsuccessful. So, And now you back yourself into third down here, and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me in the play calling department, but being it, down 34 nothing. And if you're Mansfield, I'm sure they're going to go for it on fourth down if they don't make it here. Bunch formation to the left side. And they are going to fake the toss. Lloyd Price in trouble. Now California trying to pursue. And a touchdown for Mansfield is making the reception is Tyrone Robinson. A five-yard touchdown reception from John Henschold. And Mansfield, with 2.34 left to play in the first half, finally gets on the board with a touchdown. A good play. As you said, they faked the pitch out to McNeil to the left side. Henschold rolled to his right and was just able to find uh, Tyrone Robinson in the engine for the score. So Mansfield doing a good job. I believe that was a 97-yard touchdown drive altogether. Robinson only had two catches for four yards coming in. That reception only five yards, but counts for six points. It's now number 18, Sean Hare, a junior place kicker out of Palm Coast, Florida. Will attempt the extra point. Holding will be Brandon Fields, the punter. And this is the kind that has been for Mansfield. They're going to have to burn a timeout on an extra point attempt. I believe they were short in a man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, they, they only had 10 men on the field. So probably would have been blocked by Cal had they not called a timeout to get that extra blocker in there. Number 48, Dan Eberly, a junior, sprinted onto the field. And coaches will not be real pleased with something like that. And when you're a team that doesn't have the most talent in the world and is down like this, those are just the things that will drive a coach to an early nap in the afternoon. Mansfield now with one timeout. California still with two remaining. The head coach for Mansfield is Jim Schiffer. This is his second season here at Mansfield. He actually played yeah. for Mansfield, I believe it was back in the, the I want to say the 60s, or no, excuse me, the 80s. Sorry, Coach, didn't want you to sound <laughs> that old. 86 to 88, he played and uh, is the first alumnus to come back and coach the team since former NFL Canton Bulldog Ed Russell did that 75 years ago. Paul Genuine has a little history for it. I'm just reading the, the uh, program here. <laughs> Eric Bonahan is the long sapper. Now, see, you're still a little new at this. You got to claim credit for yourself in those situations. That's why I sound so smart. I read a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that kick is a no good. So after all that, Hare shanks it to the right into the marching band. It may have landed in a tuba, and that would be one of the few catches that Mansfield has made today. But as it stands, 2.34 left to play in the first half. California comfortably ahead of Mountaineers, 34-6. Another note to mention about Jim Schiffer, he's had experience at the Division I level after uh, graduating 
from Mansfield. He moved on to coach at Yale University and also the University of Pittsburgh before joining the PSAC by first coaching Millersville and Kutztown and then came here last year to be the head coach. And California wants just to get this first half in the barn, so to speak. And this will be the first time they've sent the kick return unit out all day long. Perry Ivory, number six, at the bottom of your screen, Mark Huddleston, number three, will be at the top. Cal will also get the ball to start the second half. And Sean Hare will kick off. No wind at the present moment. And as we were walking around the field earlier, we also noticed the goalposts were slightly bent, so maybe the kickers are having a little problem with that as well. If anything, it looked wider. Fowler did hit the one goalpost in his warm-up practice. I was watching him, and he hit, and the angle actually helped him because he hit the goalpost and it went in. Short kick fielded by Nate Force, and that's the advantage of having a big receiver like Force playing on your up, one of your up men on your return team. He's able to do something like that, and he got himself about 15 yards on that return. And the Vulcans are in pretty good field position at their own 42 yard. Actually, they're marking out a little further back at their own 37, but still not bad field position with two and a half to play here in quarter number two. And you would have to think that the Vulcans are just going to simply run the ball to try to run out this clock, but the, the way the Mansfield defense has been playing, a, a few runs, they could have a touchdown. Oh, with any player, especially with Bagwell or Calhoun, any run can turn into a 70-yard run very quickly. Only takes one seam. Joe Ruggiero back in at quarterback for California. We'll also see Josh Kemp now lined up bombing your screen as a wide receiver. And the give will be to Antoine Bagwell, and there's that change of direction at the 40-45. Takes a couple hits, crosses midfield, and a flag comes late, right where you would see holding. There is a penalty flag on yeah, the Yeah, one of my favorite sayings is, uh, yeah, that flag was thrown in the area of holding, yeah. which it was, and good call by you, Ben Slezak. Pushing back 10 yards, but Bagwell doing a good job. He just, every time you see him go up the middle, you think, well, there's not much room there, but he's got these little, Little moves that he makes that just avoid every player that's up the middle. He uses a spin move as good as any running back I've ever seen. And again, in two years playing for California, I've never seen him go down on the first hit. Well, one thing to mention too, often when Bagwell goes up the middle, not only does he have to avoid the other team, but he has to avoid the, the uh, referee that's in the middle of the field <laughs> yeah. as well. That's, a danger, that's the umpire there. The umpire. And uh, he's in, always in a precarious position when a quarterback tries to dump something over the middle quickly or a linebacker's coming across. It will now be first down and 20. Ball now marked back at the Vulcan 27. We split backs for Ruggiero, and he's going to go to the air. Three-man rush, and he's going to heave it down the field for Gardner, who is held up on the play by Montgomery. Good coverage, but the pass well overthrown. It'll be second and long. Well, a very nice throw by Ruggiero. Just Gardner not quite that far down the field. And unable to catch up with the pass, but it, I mean, it, whenever you have, when you're throwing a deep pattern down the, the sideline, if you're going to throw it anywhere, throw it long, and throw it towards the sideline as well. I think the idea is just put in position where only your receiver can make a play on the ball. As California has some problems with the play here, play clock is down to five. And here comes the blitz. Ruggiero dumps it quickly over Milda Huddleston, who has it go right through his arms. Coverage on the play by number six, Jason Ziegler, a senior linebacker out of Central York High School. And now be third down and long for California. Now, by going to the air in a couple of incompletions, you set yourself up on a third and long, an opportunity where Mansfield may get the ball back with some, uh, with some time and a little bit of field to work with. Yeah, and the way that Mansfield drove down the, down the field on, that, on their last drive, this could be quickly become a 34 to 12 or 13 ball game by, by the half. Three touchdowns is a lot different than four. I mean, it, it still seems like a lot of points, but in the mentality, and the give up play to Bagwell, but a give up play to Bagwell can result in a lot of things, and this one is a 11, 12 yard carry over the 40 to the 41. Bagwell's gotta keep his cool out there. California's gonna have to punt. Another player that needs to keep his cool is number two, Ronnie Montgomery for uh, for Mansfield, we saw him earlier getting into it with Josh Kemp. This time he was a little pushing and shoving with Marcellus Gardner at the end of that run. Why doesn't Mansfield call a timeout here? Clock is still running Not a minute sure. 30. 
California can run this down to about a minute 10 or so before they kick it. They have one timeout remaining, correct? Yes. Lloyd Price is going to let the clock run down and then call a timeout. And good good decision making, good time management by California. Do not take the delay. They're not going to use any timeouts on defense. And you ran about another 20 seconds off the clock for Mansfield, who just not looked alert at all in this game, whether on the field or on the sidelines. Now with about a minute 10 to play in the first half, Vulcans 34, Mountaineer 6. And if you count on the time, that'll be wasted on the punt return. Mansfield's going to have about a slightly minute. a minute to uh, to go in the half. So hopefully a good punt will push them back deep in their own territory. But as I said, the last time they went down the field was 97 yards. Fowler's done a pretty good job punting the ball today. He will be kicking into the wind, however, here. Montgomery, the deep man, has not had a whole lot of success on these kicks. Busted one return early on a kick return after the Vulcans first score. But that's been about it. Nick Zarnich will be the long snapper for the Vulcans. Zarnich, another big player, 6'8", 235 pounds, sophomore out of Rochester High School. So he should be playing small forward, stepping out, shooting that 12, 15 foot <laughs> jump shot for Coach Bill Brown here in a couple months. But instead, he does play basketball. I played against him in intramurals, in fact, last spring. I hope you did not try to post him up. No, I did not. Okay, <laughs> smart move, son. I did steal the ball from him once. And now the whole world knows it. Yep. <laughs> Fowler's kick. And end over end towards the sideline. This one won't be returnable Ooh. as it ends up being a very short kick as the wind just totally took that football. The side judge walking up the field and he will mark it at the 36 yard line. So 64 yards between Mansfield and the end zone with a minute six left to play here in the first half. It'll be interesting to see if Henschold or Hunt comes out at quarterback. Henschold, in my opinion, has really been the better of the two and that is who is out there. Yeah, Henschold, so far in this game, he is nine for 15 throwing the ball for a touchdown. He's run the ball twice, but he's done a good job spreading the ball to receivers. You got Mathis, Robinson, and Hillary, all with three catches each. A little shovel pass to McNeil. First time we've seen that in a while. This is big yardage. Good tackle on the play made by Josh Kemp getting low, but not before McNeil gets near midfield. It will be a first down. Clock will stop while they move the chains. 58.9 seconds now left to go in the first half. Mansfield with one timeout. And that is Pooh Bear's second reception of the game. A long version of a draw play. Oh, and <laughs> Pooh Bear just let his man go right by him. I have no idea what was going on in pursuit of the quarterback was Tara Visky, and I believe that was Anthony Rose. I'm surprised they didn't call intentional grounding on that play as, who was it, Rose had his arm wrapped around Hendel. Hendel just threw it to the to the ground. It did not reach the line of scrimmage, but I guess they're going to say that Pooh Bear McNeil was in close enough proximity. Well, you could tell the way McNeil was setting up that it was going to be a screen pass, but then he didn't turn around at all. <laughs> McNeil, a former transfer from Bowling Green, and he misses another block. Hendel steps up, avoids Price. He's going to tuck and run. He's going to get himself a first down. Still on his feet, and he is pushed out at the 32-yard line, 31-yard line. A big gain there, and he stops the clock with 38 seconds left. And Mansfield's put themselves in position at some points. The Vulcan defense kind of lacks a daisical here in the following moments of the half. At least the last five minutes, we've seen a much different Mansfield offense than we had in the first, first uh, 25 minutes of the game. Henschold showing his ability to run the ball. That's the third time he's had to carry it. And neither one of those carries has been designed to run plays. They've all been him having to scramble out of the pocket and, and make up for for not any open receivers downfield. Henschel steps up in the pocket, now steps back, avoids Taravisky, and is hit by Glass, and is, inter excuse me, intercepted by Chris Glass as Josh Kemp came in and laid the hit on Henschold, and the Vulcans with the interception, Chris Glass, his first collegiate interception, will give the Vulcans the ball back at the 16-yard line, and they'll be able to run out this first half clock. Well, Henschel showing a little a little bit of some dance steps there, diving in and out between some of the 
defensive lineman for Cal. However, when it finally came down to where he knew he could not avoid his defender, he made a, a, a bad decision to just throw the ball up for grabs. And Glass did the smart thing, just catching the ball and stepping right out of bounds. Yeah, the one-two step did not work there. <laughs> I'll make McGuire happy. 27 seconds left on the clock, and it looks like they'll go to the victory formation or take a knee. And they will. I don't believe Mansfield's going to use a timeout and their coaching staff take him to the locker room. And Paul, 34 points in the first half. California with 13 touchdowns. There's going to be 11 touchdowns here in 2005 in six quarters. They have to be happy with the way they've produced. Yeah, California has to be happy. They've come out very strong. Rogerio having a good game so far. He's 11 for 18 throwing the ball. And he's spread it out to many different receivers. Bagwell's got a reception. Um, Marcellus Garner has three, two for Huddleston, four for Force, two for Demon Baker, and one for Paul Schall. So, I mean, he's spreading the ball out. A lot of different guys are touching the ball. Calhoun, Lombardi, Bagwell have all run it. Ruggiero's had to scramble himself a few times. Two touchdown passes for Ruggiero in the game. Uh, touchdown run by Bagwell, a touchdown run by Lombardi. And then, of course, the punt return by Mark Huddleston. Well, if you're Coach Lockhart, I think the success in the second half relies on staying healthy, staying alert being crisp out there and effective in your offense and being very sharp and that's what California did in the first half they lead Mansfield 34 to 6 we'll be back with the second half of action you're watching Vulcan football on CU TV I'll be ready to go in a minute take your time a vacuum <laughs> you like that don't you <laughs> All right, thirsty now, ain't you? Mmm, little Pepsi. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Your vacuum cleaner ate my pants. There's nothing I could do. Nothing chases chips like a Pepsi. It's the cola. I think I'm pregnant. I never thought this could happen to me. What do I do now? We can help at the Alternative Pathway Pregnancy Center. You have options. Get the facts. Do you know the morning after pill can have side effects? You're probably confused right now. I'll explain your options so you can make an informed decision. It's your choice. Make a decision that you can live with for the rest of your life. California 34, Mansfield 6 as we get start to set, start the second half of action from Van Norman Stadium here in Mansfield. I'm Ben Slazik, joined by Paul Genua. And California came out early, put themselves six points on the board on their first possession, and didn't really stop for the rest of the first half. No, they, they quickly built a 21-0 lead in the first quarter before it, it approached the 34-0 mark before Mansfield finally decided to get their offense moving in which they took a fumble recovery at the California, I mean, at, the, at their own three-yard line, and then drove, proceeded to drive 97 yards for their lone score of the half. They had another drive late in the half that was stalled by a Chris Glass interception about the 14-yard line. But Mansfield showed a little bit of life in the end of the second half, and hopefully they can pick up right where they left off if they want to have any chance of getting back in this ball game. Yeah, they rotate quarterback John Hedgehold, the freshman, did much better than Brandon Hunt, the junior. And if Mansfield wants to get back in this game, they're going to have to start throwing the ball down the field. They've been very ineffective on the ground. We'll get to some stats in a minute. Pooh Bear McNeil, almost really a non-factor. Deep kick to start the second half, and Hare boots this one. And Huddleston, who returned a punt 85 yards in the first half for a touchdown, will take the knee, and the Vulcans will start first and 10 from there in 20. Paul, why don't you read us some numbers? Well, rushing for California, you have Antoine Bangwell, 10 carries, 71 yards. His long... Longest uh, was a 17-yard carry. He's got one touchdown in the game. Ruggieri also ran the ball two times for 35 yards. And for Mansfield, Henschold rushed three times for 29 yards. And Pooh Bear McNeil only 22 yards on nine carries. So he's been held in check once again for the second in a row by this California defense. Pooh Bear only 2.5 a carry. And also California Brandon Lombardi, as you called him, the Jerome Bettis of this Vulcan team. Two carries, no yards, and a touchdown. First down, Nate Force makes another big catch. He swings by the 25. 
down to about the 27 yard line. Nice seven yard gain for the junior transfer from West Virginia. And speaking of Nate Force. And Nate Force, uh, that's his fifth catch of the game. He had four in the first half for 73 yards. Longest was a 28 yard reception. Garner also had three catches for the California, 41 yards. Bagwell, two catches, 51 yards in the score. Huddleston, two catches, 45 yards in the score. Overall, Joe Ruggiero was 18 for, or 12 for 18, excuse me, 215 yards and two touchdowns. And he looked really good. Humbert also putting up some nice numbers. Both those quarterbacks running for some yards as well. And here's a draw play up the middle, getting the first down is Antoine Bagwell. Give him five more, and that will move the sticks for California. On Mansfield's, excuse me, Mansfield's side of the ball, we saw Henthold, um, 11 of 24, 109 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Brandon Hunt, they only have him two for four for seven yards. I believe he passed a few more times than that, but they only have him listed here as two for four. Well, either way, the quarterbacks have not been all that effective. Henschel probably the better of the two in the first half. Joe Ruggiero still under center, in this case in the shotgun. And he'll step back, and he's going to fire out and hits his target at the 40. And that, I believe, is Marcellus Garner. And that is the player with the inter with the reception. Give him about seven yards, can make it second and three. As a team, Cal had four penalties in the first half, totaling 40 yards. Mansfield, no penalties in the first half. Mansfield had the edge in time of possession, but only by a few minutes. Total offensive plays and yards, 39 plays, 352 yards for Cal. 41 plays, 165 yards for Mansfield. And there's a couple more yards. Same play he scored on earlier. Antoine Bagwell, six for the Vulcans. That one was 56 yards and is now 40 to six, California. And that was nothing but speed down the sideline for the senior from East Lansing, Michigan. Well, Bagwell, it's his second receiving reception. Same play. Receiving touchdown reception of the game. And as you said, ju just dashed right down the sideline. A, a couple good blocks and he's gone. It doesn't take much for Bagwell to scamper towards the end zone. And if there was one downside for California, if you want to really nitpick, Fowler missed two extra points. He's on to attempt another one. Dumb will hold, test of the snapper. And this one not Ooh. real pretty, but that one counts. Yep. The wind causing havoc for the California kickers, but not for Antoine Bagwell. His third touchdown of the game, and if I do some math here, uh, for 22 in his California career, and it is 41-6 to six in well, favor of the Vulcans. Antoine Bagwell has been a threat for opposing defenses. Um, a player that is, uh, you almost want to say unstoppable because at any given time, he can break one long, whether it's receiving the ball or just taking it off the handoff and, and, and running down the field. He has good speed, good vision, and a lot of quickness with, with his moves. Well, he's now had 24 total touchdowns in his California career, and actually today his first two receiving touchdowns of his California career, and on top of that, he'll go over 100 yards receiving as well. So Antoine Bagwell continues to rewrite history here at California University. And uh, I'm still thinking that the team may keep him in there until he gets to that 100-yard rushing plateau. But yeah, I was going to say he's 29 yards shy of that, and I'm, I'm not sure if anyone on the team wants to see him lose that streak he's got going of 100-yard games. He picked up maybe six or so on a carry earlier, but just that speed out of the back. And that's something they haven't done a whole lot with him. He had maybe six, seven catches last year. But the ability to turn the corner like that and getting a couple good blocks from his wide receivers. Montgomery will field this one on the run. It takes a bad hop, and he's going to have to kneel this in the end zone. Nice kick from Fowler. The Mountaineers will start first and 10 from their own 20, just underway here in the second half, 13.52 to play. The Vulcans with seven touchdowns on the day. They lead Mount Mansfield 41 to six. Six touchdowns on the day. You know, when you look at Bagwell too, he's only 5'11", 185 pounds. Not overly big for a back. But he plays bigger than he is. Yeah, much bigger. And if if you look at running backs in the past that have made it in the NFL, Barry Sanders is the name that comes to mind. He was a small back. Um, Eric Dickerson wasn't huge for his for his uh, quality of play. McNeil picks up a yard or so, but looking in the California press guide and game programs, Bagwell lists Barry Sanders as his idol, is, is the player he tries to resemble his game off of. And if you're going to pick somebody, I guess 
that's about as good as it is. Sanders maybe not, or excuse me, Bagel maybe not as elusive, doesn't have quite the footwork, but maybe even a little stronger than Sanders was, as we mentioned, his inability to go down on that first second hit. And some local um, guys to mention that are, are not very big but have been successful so far in the NFL, Brian Westbrook of the Eagles That's and Willie point. Parker of the Steelers. There's always there's always going to be time for a that fumble. fumble. And California Moore trying to pick it up, and he takes out two of his own players. Cook's in pursuit, and it looks like Mansfield's going to come up with the ball as Brian Moore had visions of the end zone. And then he took out Lloyd Price in the process, and it looks like Mansfield got the ball back, and they're going to lose maybe three yards on this play. Good pressure in on the Mansfield quarterback, Henshold, as uh, he's taken a quite a few hits in the last quarter or so. Now, I understand as a defensive player, you don't get the opportunity to score too often, so when it, when it comes up, you see that I'm sure he was licking his chops, Brian Moore, thinking, "Oh man, I, I can get this and take it in for six. But you you got to know as a defender, just fall on that football. Last player to score defensive touchdowns for Cal. I remember Jason Cook had an interception return, as did Lloyd Price last year. Henschel, he wanted the screen, and it's not there. And Test is in pursuit. And Hengehold goes down at about the 15-yard line, back to about the line of scrimmage. But that's going to be it, and a punt team on for Mansfield. And a busy day for Mansfield's punter, Brandon Field. Six punts, 42.3-yard average in the first half. Fowler punted only twice for the Vulcans. Doesn't, didn't do a whole, whole lot, 26 yards. Did get one inside the 20. But when you're up by 40 points, a bad kicking day is the least of your worries. However, that's something that needs to be addressed later in the year. And one of his punts was taken back 80 yards by Huddleston for a touchdown. And Quabino Bafo Bonnie almost got that kick and Fields pops it up. It will take a Mansfield roll into California territory. It's going to be Brandon, down at you know, the Vulcan 46 yard line. 11 32 left to play here in the third the quarter. The Vulcans have scored on their first possession of this quarter. And we'll have pretty good field position to start this drive. You know, it's a shame that ball bounced back towards the middle of the field because if it would have bounced to this near side of the field, Huddleston was ready to pick it up and run. There was no one for a good 20 yards in front of him. Yeah, Mansell was expecting that ball bounce forward. It bounces back. There's six, seven red jerseys past the football. See who the Vulcans bring out a quarterback here, and it will be Ruggiero. We have not seen Cecil Howard at all. The no. transfer from Syracuse, the, the tight end, fullback, goal line specialist, all 260 pounds of him. And Ruggiero is going to give the ball to Bagwell. I think this is mission one of the day. Add 10 more. Well, there's 15, 100. 20 more. About 25 yards on that carry. He's and got 100. Paul said that should put him yeah, over the century mark. One. And just a little scrum now breaking out. Of course, Bagwell's involved in that one. The heck you say. And now DeMond Baker pushes him out of the pile and a couple linemen coming in. I thought it was Bagwell that, that started that at the end of the play, but I, I, I guess it wasn't. I, sees, I couldn't tell the number from this far across the field. It was Nate Force that Nate was Force, in the okay. middle of all that, and he was... Probably throwing a block downfield, and, and the players got a little tangled up and a little extra push and shove and led to some words, and some words led to just some action. Some actions, yeah. and some actions lead to added, as you said. Huddleston and Brandon Jackson will be in the game at wide receiver. We'll see the backfield of Calhoun and Bagwell. My guess is this might be the last series for Bagwell as well. There's but that wind whipping again. Everything's taped down now, correct? <laughs> Hopefully. Fake the draw. Ruggiero's going to go in the air, and he's got a wide open Huddleston at the sideline, makes the catch at the 16, gets maybe another yard. But the hookup of 16 yards from Ruggiero to Huddleston. Huddleston having one of his best receiving days as a California Vulcan. Of course, he had that long punt return for a touchdown, 80 yards officially. And that was that punt return was um, Huddleston's first career punt return for a touchdown and also the longest return of his career. And then we go back to last year, Chip, where he could yeah. have had a longer one as well. That, Offset eye. That play still upsets me. Counter to Bagwell. Huge hole over the left side. And Bagwell with six more. Six for the Vulcans now, 47-6. to six. California, four touchdowns for Antoine Bagwell. Gives him five on the year. The two rushing, two receiving so far in this game and 25 for his California career, 47 to six. 
California leads. Number 72, Tim McCutcheon, pulled from his left guard and just paved the way for yeah, Mr. Bagwell. Low snap. Fowler doing a much better job on this attempt. And he'll make it a 48-6 game. California cruising, 10-49 left to play, quarter number three. And I have a suspicion we're going to see some new numbers on that field shortly for California. Yeah, you would hope so because you don't want to you know, start to get the uh, Mansfield coaches and team team upset because, I mean, in a situation like this where you have such a, a large lead, you don't want to try and show up the other team and run up the score on them because that's something that teams will not forget and if you know one day they have the advantage over you sometime you know they're gonna they're gonna take that revenge when the opportunity arises but John coach John Luckhart is is a very very smart very respectable coach and I'm sure I'm sure he's got a game plan that will bring the backups in in, in, in due time coach Luckhart his fourth year here at California just over the 500 mark 17 and 16 and in these last two years, California and Mansfield, a little over six quarters, California 111 points to Mansfield's 12. And you know, if you look at Coach Luckhart's record, it, it really does not, does not speak for the job that he has done here. Because he had two years in a row where there was a lot of quarterback injuries. I know, um, it was, oh, I can't think of the name. Yeah, I'm trying to Brandon, trying to think. Brandon. Oh, no. Before but Strayer. some someone oh Dustin no Dustin Strayer went down and that's when uh, oh, yeah. Greg Dapper had to come in and relieve him in the 2004 season. Brandon Ladon, yeah. Brandon Ladon was another one that went down, and so he he had two winning seasons six and five six and four but that four and seven record in the middle, and both the four and seven season and the six and four season were plagued by injuries. They could have done better each year. And, and he's done a nice job. You mentioned all the recruits he brought in and uh, a lot of D1 talent out there. And then you got a player like Bagwell, who, who very well could be playing on Sundays next year. Paul Potsman, one of the up men, gets uh, an opportunity to return the ball, gets maybe 10 yards on it. And the Mountaineers will start from their own 32. And it looks like they're going to go with Hengehold, at least for the foreseeable future. This is the third straight series he's had in there. They still see a lot of starters for California. Nate Liberty's on the field playing free safety right now. We haven't heard a whole lot from Jason Cook because mostly they haven't thrown his that way. Hengehold, I'll give him credit, he stays in the pocket. Now he's rolling out to his left, and now he's being drugged down by his jersey. Now he's fumbling the ball, and now the Vulcans have another possession. I couldn't see who fell on it, but I think that was Chris Glass. I think you are correct. 13 is Chris Glass. Yeah, Brian Moore was around that area of that ball too, but Chris Glass saying, Big man, you didn't fall on it last time, so I'm going to do it for you. I think 90 Testa was one of the men over there. But that was a total team effort. As Hengehold was just looking somewhere. You just got That's a freshman mistake. You just got to throw that ball into the bleachers. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell exactly what happened. There was a lot of players in the way, but I, I saw he was grabbed by the jersey being spun around. At that point, you just got to think, you know, go down, quarterback, go down, so you don't have something like the ball pop out like that, which, which he didn't go down trying to make a play when perhaps it wasn't there and, and the fumbles are going to happen. Couple subs in. Lombardi's in a tailback. Number 73, Brad Watkins is in at left guard replacing McCutcheon and Lombardi will take that famous trap play and he's got a big hole over the right side. He's down over the 20, the 15 and a big hit out of bounds. At around the 13 yard line, Brandon Lombardi picks up about 20 yards on that carry. First and 10 for the Vulcans. Well, Cal changing up, putting Humbert in the game, putting Lombardi in the game, and you still don't notice a difference. The, the flow of that offense is just so consistent and so smooth. The coaches have really done a very good job of coaching coaching this California offense. And and it's it's showing by you know the backups not missing a step when they come into the game. And they run the same offense. They don't really slow it down a whole lot or, or simplify. It's the same offense. You saw Humbert in in the game in the second quarter. Lombardi more their goal line back, but getting some carries here deeper in the field as the LH graduate over center. He's going to hand the ball up. This is the same play. Lombardi, same result. Five. Touchdown wow. six for the Vulcans. Now 54-6. to six. Brandon Lombardi now with four touchdowns in his California career in two games. You know, last year they put up 63 against Manfield and that was, there. that was the most that they've ever scored since I've been here at Cal, I believe, and the most that they've scored in quite some time against any opponent. I know they've put up 60 once or twice against Cheney, 
But, um, I mean, we could see them breaking that mark today. And, and it's not because they're trying to run the score. I mean, they're just handing the ball off. And if your offensive line is pushing the other team 10, 15 yards downfield, you're going to score eventually by taking chipping away chunks of yardage like that. And the extra point is up and good. Extra point 40. Is good. Number 40 is Dustin Puzzuto, a freshman kicker off Harrison City, PA, a Penn Trafford graduate. Gets his first point as a California Vulcan on the extra point. We actually saw that last year. Cheney, when Fowler came on for Gary Amos to kick a couple extra points at the end of the game. And uh, Coach Luckhart going deep into the bench right now. And uh, when you're up 55 to 6, still with 10 minutes left to go in the third quarter, this game has gone on of close to two and a half hours already. And California just keeps putting the pressure on offensively, and Mansfield's not doing a whole lot with their end. No, if you're Mansfield, I mean, you're not going to win this game. Don't, don't. That's a fair assumption. Yeah, don't try and, and fool yourself. But if you're if you're on the Mansfield offense, you just at least you want to be respectable. Yeah, be respectable. Play some consistent offense. Move the ball. Take up some time off the clock. So that way, your defense is not continually having to be put out on the field. And, and just because if they're going to be on the field all the time, they're going to wear out. California's going to score and score and score, whether they want to or not. Looking down the field, Fowler's going to kick off, trying to find some new numbers out there. 41, Brandon Hickel, among others, Liberty on the kick team. And this low liner into the win. Puzot Potsden had to go through his hands. Montgomery up with it. He has a little bit of a seam to the middle before he's wrapped up by Liberty. And some more pushing and shoving. 28 is Mike Dotson. Yeah, Dotson's a freshman linebacker, 6'2", 215 pounds out of Waldorf, Maryland. Him and Nate Liberty were also in on that tackle. 21, Travis Williams there as well, playing special teams. Dotson's gonna stay out there. As does Nate Liberty, taking over for Jermaine Moy. Kemp out there, number 58 as well, Brian Moore. Looks like he's moving down to a down lineman position. Right now, California only has one lineman to nose tackle. <laughs> and flags fly. That's Anthony Rose, I believe, is in the game, number 92. Well, the way he's played in some of these snaps, and a false start goes against Mansfield. I tell you, Anthony Rose is one of those guys, you don't hear his name too often in the game, but he, he's, a, he's a big game changer because he, he gets up there and he takes up two blockers just about from every team. And that's going to free up other guys like your linebackers, like Brian Moore and Lloyd Price to come in and make plays. Oh, their front, we talk about their linebackers, but their front three uh, has been phenomenal going back to last year. And they rotate five, six, seven guys mm -hmm. in on that front seven. Right now they only three. got two. Draw play, <laughs> give it to McNeil. And a nice tackle there Good made. There. Brian McNeil Moore got a hand on the ankle and slowed up McNeil enough to get him to the ground. Gary Butler also out there. Butler actually playing with what looks like a cast on his right hand, playing the Bob Orton role of the game tonight. Well, it looks like they got they got Avery Good, number 97, and then Anthony Rose, number 92, in the game on the line. And then they're going with about four linebackers and then one, two, three, four, five defensive backs. So sure what you would call this. Bit. Yeah. The 2-5, two 2-4. Two oh, good blitz pickup, and there is Brian Moore, who in my opinion has probably been the player of the game on defense for California. He's made a lot of things happen, and he gets a sack there. That's something California does not do a whole lot. They don't sack the quarterback, but the constant pressure on him creates turnovers, allows the others to make plays, and Brian Moore does get his sack there. I believe that's his first of the year. It'll now be third down and 24. Yeah, I, often, Mansfield. I often think that they should have more sacks in the game than they do, but yeah. a lot of the quarterbacks they play against are very talented and are able to scramble and, and, and get away. And plus, if you play just the 3-4 defense, you're not, it's not exactly. meant to get a lot of sacks. But you will see a lot of tackles for losses as Hedgehog goes down the field. He had a man for a moment looking for Ozzie Mathis, but good coverage by Jared Dumb and Jason Cook. Now, we haven't called Cook's name a whole lot in these first two games, and he's usually on the other team's best receiver. But Cook's a, a difference maker. He's a big hitter in his senior year out of Duquesne High School, played at Northwestern, and uh, now getting a chance. Maybe he wants to play at that next level, and but yeah. he has not really had that many chances to make plays because he hasn't been involved in the play. You're right. But Cook, Cook does have a lot of talent. and I mean, he's someone that I could see definitely um, getting a few tryouts with some pro teams. I mean, I, I still remember the, a wow. hit he put on a West Virginia Wesleyan player a couple years back where he knocked off his helmet. 
That punt was from the 18 yard line by Fields. It was down at the California 11. 71 yards if I'm counting correctly. As Perry Ivory who is back just let it bounce. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. That's not a bad punt. I think I got, yeah, I think that's right. He sounds Everybody's right to doing me. the math in their head right now. I'm not a math major, but I'm attempting. Give me a calculator, somebody. See some more linemen up front. Number 67, Matt Message, a Mapletown graduate, in its center right now. Well, this could be one of those seasons that um, Rusty Springer had a couple years ago for yeah. Cal. For uh, for Brandon Fields of Mansfield, he could be the MVP of this team if he keeps punting like that all year. Josh Davidson, a freshman out of Hamilton, Ohio, 6'5", 300-pound backup, now playing right tackle. And Humbert will hand the ball off, and this is Robert Calhoun. He's trying to string something up. Nice change of direction, still on his feet, and he gets down to the 19-yard line. There's what we were talking about with Calhoun. He's just as talented as any other back in this conference, but behind Bagwell, but still... Not a bad second choice as he picks up about seven yards there, second and three coming up. 8-13 left to play third quarter. Yeah, he looks a lot like Bagwell when he's running the ball. He's got he's got those quick moves. He make it, makes a lot of guys miss. He just doesn't have the speed that Bagwell has in the open field. Junior on Newcastle, Pennsylvania. One of the first games I did, he ran about 80 yards against Geneva. I think that was the first football game I did way back a few years ago. And he'll get another look here. Nice change of direction at the line. First down and more as he crosses the 25 and the Vulcans move the sticks. How many first downs do they have in the first half, Paul? Um, let me look here. First Got down. Got on the carry. Seventeen. That, that's a good sign. That is and they've rattled off a few, and that doesn't count the few big plays they had. We saw Bagwell over 50 yards on two receptions. The drive charts aren't real long. Yeah, and considering they do have a lot of big play scores, I mean, 17 first downs just shows you how much they did not move the ball. And their quarterback play has been phenomenal today, too. We'll go again with Calhoun. He's upended. Nice tackle made by number five, Andre Turner. About five, five more five. yards oh, as you. Mansfield just trying to get the ball back and oh, hope their offense can do something. 55 to 6. They trail by 49 points with about seven minutes left to play here in the third quarter. And they'll face a second down and five. And what was a big day here for Mansfield. Uh, we'll get to that after this play. As a lot of the crowd has left after halftime. And maybe for them it was a good thing. Humbert's going to throw. He's going to swing it out looking for Gerger as big tight end. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage. Number six, Jason Ziegler got a hand on it. But today is the Josh Palmer Pigskin Classic here at Mansfield. And Mansfield annually designates one home game as the Josh Palmer Pigskin Classic to raise money for cancer research. The game is an honor a former Mansfield player, Josh Palmer, who overcame Hodgkin's disease, which we all know is a form of cancer. Mary Lemieux of the Penguins also beat that disease and returned to play for the football team after dropping to 110 pounds. The game raises money for the Josh Palmer Fund designed to assist area youth afflicted by cancer. And they had a lot of auctions and giveaways as Perry Ivory on the wide receiver screen gets a first down to the California 40-yard line. So another receiver gets a catch for California. But they had a lot of giveaways. We saw a lot of people with shirts out. And a nice program really run here by Mansfield. And I'll give them credit. They really packed this gym in. That there's not a whole lot going on in north central Pennsylvania. So they're big about their Mountaineer sports. And we heard scores from other sports. And they they were cheering for each and every one of those, even the smaller, smaller sports. And uh, you got to give the fans credit up here. Yeah, and and considering that as as we were driving into town, there was between Williamsport and here not much to see. <laughs> There's road but trees. and trees and a dirt road. We and saw so it. I don't know where all these people came from. Whether they came out of hiding, I don't know. But but they're out here and, and they're definitely showing support for their Mansfield athletics. Oh, Humbert on a bootleg. Got caught halfway Ooh. between a slide and a tackle. It didn't look pretty. And uh, Ryan Cassick kind of laid off of him when he saw him going into the slide, but Humbert showing those wheels. He picked up about 12 yards, getting into Mountaineer territory. And there he'll have the ball at the 45 of Mansfield. 
But this is my second time up here. I love the area up here. It's, it's very nice. My, very my first scenic. time here. I think you said earlier, right out of a Bob Ross painting. <laughs> And uh, this time, much better result for California than the last time they came out. Brandon Jackson gets a reception on the left side over the 40 and still on his feet. Nice block out there by Tony Hoskin. Something that's underrated for California. We talked how good that offensive line is. Their receivers block very well. And to spring the kind of runs that Bagwell, Calhoun, et cetera, have, you got to get blocking on the outside, and that was a good example there, Paul. Well, one thing to mention, too, is, is you have receivers in Brandon Jackson, Tony Hoskin, and Marcellus Gardner who were here for a year without Claude Whitaker and Garvin Graves. Yeah, that's a good point. Who then came back. So so they had a year of experience under their belts. Then they got to sit back and watch as Whitaker and Graves got to be the stars in the offense. And now, you know, after having a year of experience and then a year under tutelage, they're back on the field playing, and it's and, and their success is showing. T.J. Martinick, the Frazier project, product out there as Calhoun takes the carry and picks up the first down to the Mansfield 32-yard line. Our colleague April Pasteric made me promise that if he got on the field, I'd make sure I noticed him. And uh, one of the only fr the only Frazier graduate out there. And yeah. fortunately, uh, his uh, alma mater fell to Brandon Jackson's alma mater. Manesson. As Manesson took out Frazier in high school football action last night. Yeah, Brandon Jackson was a two-sport star at, in Manesson, mm -hmm. played basketball and football. Very talented at athlete. And uh, TJ Martinak, is a player that I got to watch as my freshman year here at Cal we're doing our CUTV High School Football Game of the Week. Martinak was a defensive back and I believe a quarterback for, mm -hmm. for Frazier. And there's the give to Lombardi and he's swallowed up quickly at the 30. One of the Brandon, smallest gains of the day for California, only about two yards. And it's gonna be second down in about eight clock. Still winding as we're under five minutes now to go here in the third quarter. Number 33, Romaro Rush is out there for the first time in about a year and a half that I can remember. Played in the first game last year against West or against uh, Mansfield. Didn't see the field redshirt the rest of the year. And Rush is another guy on the smallish side. Only 5'7", 175 pounds, Northgate High School. But uh, a lot of speed, he's returned some kicks as well. And Humbert's gonna throw that out in a dangerous pass intended for Hoskin. Knocked down by C.J. Okajeri. And Humbert, uh, not the best read on that play, and it'll be third down. No, Okajeri did a good job of reading that pass and coming up underneath it, almost had the pick, might have been able to score had he hauled that one in. Um, just wanna mention for Cal, they have brought in two new tackles in the game. Number 71, Brian Melcher, a freshman, 6'4", 290 pounds out of Strongville, Ohio. Went to Strongville High School. And also number 65, Josh, Josh Davidson. Davidson, another freshman offensive lineman, 6'5", 300 pounds out of Hamilton, Ohio. And I think the guard is new as too. And this throw wide open, Jackson at the 10, five touchdown, six for the Vulcans. 61 to six. and a, some faint booing from the crowd, but California hasn't exactly changed up their offense a whole lot. And if it wasn't for the fa couple failed points, we would have that 63-6 score from last year, and there's still four minutes left to play here in the third quarter. Yeah, you're right, Ben, and you know, you know there's nothing you can do to stop that play. I mean, Brandon Jackson just ran a simple slam pattern, and the defense was was very lax for Mansfield on the play. Brandon Jackson was wide open and pretty much walked into the end zone after making that catch. 22-yard kick. Pazuto with the extra point, and he's two for two, and is now 61-6 to six California Vulcans over the Mountaineers of Mansfield. 418 left to play, quarter number three, and more and more people starting to head for the gates here at Van Norman Stadium. Pizzuto, I uh, think we mentioned earlier from Penn Trafford High School where another famous Cal alum is from, Wes Clemens, mm -hmm. running back here for four years. I was actually just up in the Penn Trafford area the other day driving around the McKeesport area. didn't realize how close it was to McKeesport. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with the proximity of, of the bigger schools, the Quad A, the Pittsburgh schools, but definitely some talent. You watch any high school highlights, uh, you're going to see some quality players that you're going to see at the next level, which uh, will remind everybody watching to tune in to High School Round of 2005, uh, featuring myself, John McGuire, and Brian Herman, the sports editor of the Valley Independent. Uh, check your local listings. We highlight area games. Check out the standings. Give our plays of the weekend predictions for upcoming games. And uh, Johnny actually has our CUTV High School football. Paul, excuse me, has our high school football game of the week schedule for uh, our next coming games here. Yeah, in case you want to check out some of the 
some some of the full action of those games that you will, that you will see highlights for on the High School Roundup show. Every week, CUTV goes out and covers a game Friday night, and it will be aired Sunday at 8.30 on CUTV and Thursdays at 5.30. Coming up this next week, we have Bishop Canavan at Best Center. Double A game. We had a good one last night as California at home beat Carmichael's in Montgomery. Gets the outside before he's wrapped up. A host of tacklers for California. Corbino, Bafo, Bonnie, Brandon Hickel in on the stop along with Matt Gerger. But a good return for Montgomery to the 35. What else we got coming up after that, Paul? After the Bishop Canavan at Best Center game, September 23rd, you have Norwin at Connellsville, a big quad A matchup. Uh, September 30th, Mount Pleasant at Uniontown. October 7th, Southmoreland at Brownsville, home of our uh, famous director, Gary Smith. I wouldn't call him famous. Oh, uh, well, he's famous there. to me. And a and new then, back in the game. Excuse me, go ahead, okay. Paul. I'll I'm sorry. Get to that. And then October 14th, Mapletown at Frazier, and we round out the season. October 21st, Elizabeth Ford at Ringle. However, we should be doing a playoff game the following. We're just not sure what game that will be at this time. That last game also featured the Elizabeth Ford at Ringle game. We featured statewide on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. That was Rodney Davis who got a couple yards on that last play. Actually, a yard. Second down, about eh, about eight to go. And for those of you who do want to check out the high school games on CUTV or the Vo California Vulcan games on CUTV, it is Channel 39 on Armstrong Cable in California. Don't catch it! Channel 61 in Connellsville, Channel 21 on Atlantic Broadband, and Channel 13 on Comcast. Anthony Rose with a swat back to Hedgehold, and Hedgehold decides to run with it. Saw a lot of white and fell to the ground. And he'll get about two more yards. He'll be third down about five to go. Lloyd Price was a little shaken up, and he's actually going to go to the sidelines. I was watching Jason Cook at the end of that play. He ran his receiver, number 88, Ozzie Mathis, right out of bounds, just drove him to the ground. Jason Cook. Play. Jason Cook's a strong guy. Six foot two, fifteen. He actually played safety a couple years ago here, and uh, he had an interception last week. Uh, that's about the only play we've seen him really make. As in pursuit for California is Matt Sichter, and hitting uh, yep, edge hold out of bounds wow. was number forty-two. Dodd, or excuse me, that's Darren Burns, a freshman linebacker on McKee Sport, and that's not what you want to do. Turn some more playing time. This will add fifteen more after it was already a first down. Yeah, Darren Burns. It looked as though he did try to slow up, but he was running so hard and just it just ran right into edge hold. And and I mean. That's something you, you don't want to see happen, but sometimes you can't help it. But you know, Henshold wasn't hurt at all. It wasn't like it was intentional and he tried to lay him out or anything. That, that's just a borderline aggressive penalty. It wasn't really, he was going head hunting out there. No, but it's still something the refs have yeah. to call. And Burns is one of the most excitable players out there. He's on the kick cover team, and you'll see him jumping around, get, trying to get uh, the rest of the cover guys going before each kickoff. 6'3", 215-pound freshman. Now 239 left to play in a third quarter. Just the third quarter. <laughs> Henshold is knocked down from behind, and that pass is nearly intercepted. Anthony Rose has been in Henshold's... Uh, face mask the entire game he has two batted balls catches the quarterback's arm there and nearly was picked off by I couldn't tell the number I think that was Sichter who almost got a, the interception the Bell Vernon product out of West Newton Anthony Rose is a gamer he will get in there many times throughout the game and and mess with the quarterback's mind. He's got one of those engines that just doesn't turn off. And this is a little swing pass, a little screen out to Pooh Bear McNeil, who does manage to get about eight yards up to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and about two. At the end of that, shovel pass. At the end of that play, he kind of rolled over the legs of his fellow teammate and wide receiver, Matt Hildebrand. He's uh, limping a little bit over there, trying to keep his feet. Jamar Folks in at left tackle, 6'4", 321 pounds, number 51, out of Westinghouse High School in Pittsburgh. See how Rose does now. And they're going to run the option, McNeil. Needs the 27, and Ooh. I don't think he got it. No, Good Brian, hustle. Brian Moore upended him, and oh, there's there's a little scrum there between it's Nate, Liberty. Like Nate Liberty and a big number 60. That's uh, Mike Guanciale. Gu I, don't, I don't even Good know how enough. to pronounce that for uh, sophomore, 6'2", 305 pounds for Mansfield, getting it going at it there. Will Forbes, 36 in on the tackle. First time we've called his name in a Vulcan uniform. 
6'1 freshman of Aliquippa. Will Forbes, I know that guy. Known as Wild Willie. <laughs> Wild <laughs> Willie in my classes. Got a couple classes with him this semester. Good to see him getting some playing time. Listed as a backup to Brian Moore on the two deeps for California. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. And that says it all for the day for Mansfield. Pass about three yards in front of Rodney Davis. Henshall just looks to the sky and will go to the sideline. California will take over on downs with a minute 12 left to play in quarter number three, comfortably protecting the 62 to six lead. They've scored just about every way possible. A couple big plays from Bagwell. Nice job passing the ball with Ruggiero and Humbert. We saw Mark Huddleston on any yard punt return. All aspects of the game clicking for California. Yeah, there's no denying that California has just been sharp in all aspects of the game, as you said. And I mean, when, when you're running game and your special team and your passing game are all clicking like that and your defense plays as well as the California defense does, you, you're going to be looking good if you can stay healthy. You're going to be looking good for the, a, a long part of the season. Well, as you said, it's always those first couple games, Cal looks good, then they kind of get in that meat of that conference season as Romaro Rush will take the handoff from center over the 35 and Rush gets about six yards. Romaro Rush into the game. And uh, I think the key, let's talk a little bit about next week's game, uh, Paul. The leaving the PSAC, line. leaving the Wiviac, they're going to move up and play a 1AA team in Monmouth in New Jersey on the road. And that's going to be a really tough challenge, a six-hour drive out to New Jersey. And this will really see where they stand. Now, they played a 1AA team a couple years ago in Northern Illinois, and that didn't work out real well for them. But uh, it's a good measuring stick. Yeah, and I mean, in my opinion, Monmouth is a better team than that Northern Illinois team was a couple years ago. Cal was just just a little. Cal had a few bad situations. Eastern Illinois, oh, excuse, excuse us, Eastern Illinois. But Cal had a few, just a bad, a couple bad situations where they got off to a bad start and there were some penalties that didn't go their way and just the twenty-seven nothing score against Eastern Illinois was not. Indicative. indicative of what the game really was. But Monmouth is a much better team. But however, Cal is a much better team now than That's they were point. two years ago. So, it, I mean, you never know what might happen in that game. And, and that team is a, is a powerhouse at their level. They've been a very winning football team. Morrow rushed on a nice shot, pinballing his way forward and showing you that you don't have to be six foot, 220 pounds to run the ball. As he's picked up Again, close to 30 well, yards well, here well, in the well, Mansfield well, territory to the 45-yard line, and the third quarter will come to an end on that last play. California all over Mansfield, 62-6, to and it's been all Vulcans so far. And we'll be right back on CU TV with the fourth quarter with the Vulcans way ahead of Mansfield. Don't be fooled by imitators. We're talking the real deal here. Accords and Civics in stock, in style, and ready to move. Don't settle for less. Step up to Honda Odyssey, the ideal family vehicle. And don't let yourself down. The rugged and functional new pilot, the Honda of SUVs. Get the vehicle you want at the price you want from a dealer you know, Washington Honda. Dynamite deals right here today. Come on in, you're number one. Quarter number four begins with the Vulcans ahead 62 to six for the second straight year, putting 60 plus on the board against Mansfield. And quarterback Matt Humbert will have a second down and swings out to Perry Ivory. He'll have a first down, still on his feet as he gets to the 30 yard line, tucks it down. And the freshman transfer from the University of Toledo gives the Vulcans another first down as we see many different toys being used by offensive coordinator Mike Keller and coach Lockhart. Trying some new things on. You never know when one of these players is going to have to step up. That's basically all you can say right now at this point. It's getting game experience and seeing what works and what may not work. Yeah, because Cal is so used to having to have to go with second and even third stringers in, in the past couple of years. Um, I know even, I believe it was two years ago, where they were down to where they brought Jared Dunn back um, yeah. in his quarterback, you know, and, and he's a defensive back for this team. But um, so Cal, Cal doing a good job getting those other players experience as you said. How about Romaro Rush picking up a solid 17 yards off left tackle inside the 15 yard line and Rush is another one of those players if it, God forbid anything happens to Bagwell and Calhoun moves up that starter then Rush becomes a part of the offense a regular player. Yeah, Rush is listed at 5'7", 175 That's not correct. Pounds. <laughs> That's generous because I'm about I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and Rush is, I've had a class or two with him, and he is not 
not quite that big, but a lot faster than I. Yeah, he is very quick, and it's obvious. You can just watch from up here how quick he is. Pro I would say close to Bagwell speed. And he drags a couple tacklers before Wes Bear lands on top there, saying the ball is down. Her ball is loose, I should say. I hear Mansfield players calling for a fumble. And that will not be the referee's decision there. It'll be second down in about seven. Ball will be spotted around the Mansfield 12-yard line. And if you're, if you're a fan of football and you're asking, why is California running the no huddle when they're up by this big? This is just how they run their offense. They really don't have anything set where they huddle up and break like a, a traditional football team or a football offense would. So they are just basically running their offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw this a lot last year when, when Humbert was the quarterback for, for four games as a starter, running the no offensive. of, And it, it's not like a quick no offensive type of uh, uh, team. It's it's a, you know, get up to the line, you know, I'll get the play in from the sideline, then I'll s send the signals out to you guys, and then let's run the play. And there's Humbert with another nice carry. 71, Brian Melcher had a nice job leading there. He's coming from his, trying to figure out where he is on the field. He's playing left tackle. Just came right around the end there and led. And I think we're going to get a timeout here, maybe. No. Humbert's going to go to the side. And Cecil Howard checks into the game for the first time. We talked about this young man, 6'3", 230. McKeesport product, transfer from Syracuse. Was listed as a tight end. And this is where they've used him. He had a touchdown. And we're going to have a timeout on the field. And man, no, California, play clock was running down, so they're going to burn a timeout. But how about this? you got a quarterback that's used to running the option, as big as he is, and a, a pretty strong arm as well, that you can use maybe three, five snaps a game in situations like this. It's like having a linebacker back there at line up under center. Yeah, and you know Cecil Howard, they brought him in a few times a couple weeks ago against Fairmont State. Uh, brought him in, and he pretty much ran the ball in those situations. So, you, but you don't want to do that all the time and get get teams to the point where they're, where they're thinking, okay, Howard this is going to be a run. Yeah. You know, and I, I believe he did have a couple pass attempts two weeks ago, but mostly they've used him as a running um, quarterback. An option quarterback. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's good that you have quick, speedy backs like Calhoun and Bagwell and Romaro Rush to put in with Cecil Howard so that you can run the option play. And you also have running quarterbacks like Humber and Ruggiero. Everybody for California that lines up in the backfield can run the ball. Ruggiero, I don't know how, how timid he is going to be or how much they want him to run, but and there was some movement at left tackle there. Mm. Now the flags come in. This will back up the Vulcans. Five, what was a third and one, will now be third and six. And Cecil, Cecil Howard was just going to go up the middle and try to pick up that yardage, but now it's going to have to change up the play call a little bit. See if they keep him in here, they bring Humbert back in. Leroy Johnson is also now in the game, number 89, subbing in for um, De well, Demond Baker and Matt Gerger had been getting most of the playing time at tight end. Gerger's still in there, but Johnson's a player. He is another big guy. 6'4", 265 from Peabody High School. Did some things last year, kind of fell down the depth chart this year, got stuck behind Baker, and Gerger's been the consistent there for the past couple years. But uh, a, still a weapon you can use in situations like this. Howard is going to stay in the game, and he's going to hit. No, he's, yeah, he is going to hand the ball off. And Romaro Rush, wow. six for the Vulcans. What, what a play by Romaro Rush. I mean, you almost didn't think that he had the ball first because he got the ball, and then as he was making his way to the left side of the line, he just kind of stopped. But he was, he was looking for room. It almost looked like he was looking for a block, but he was looking for room. And as small as he is, I don't think anyone saw him. And he found that hole and just quickly darted through it and easily into the end zone. And now you're taking a look at another new kicker for California. Chris Goodnight. Chris Goodnight. A freshman, six foot 180 out of Brashear High School. And three kickers have scored for California. As he puts that up and through. 12 20. Left to play in the football game, 69 to six. Coming up on records all across the board for the Vulcans. Do I hear 70? Do I hear 70, anybody? 71, 72? It's not going to take a whole lot at this point. But you look at Rush coming in the game, basically in a mop-up role. But he's probably given you 75 yards so far. Oh and a yeah, touchdown. easily. I mean, each time he gets the ball, he's been picking up five or six yards. A couple times he's had over 10 yards on a carry. And going back, that's that's all due to the offensive line. Just the quality and the depth that the, that Cal has. 
I mean, they're all big guys. I mean, and I, I know looking at the uh, the roster, a lot of these big offensive linemen they're getting out of Ohio. Yeah, Zaznanski's the smallest lineman they have on their two deeps, and he's at 260, and he's the starting center. Everybody else is 280 plus. And you got Stewart at 315, Carl J at 302, Han Davidson off the bench at 300. But with Rush, I mean, he's giving you 80 yards here. We've seen Calhoun come in at the end of games, and so, you know, you think he's just playing five, six snaps. He's got 60, 70 yards. The depth on this team is just phenomenal this year. And then you have so many wide receivers as well last year. It was a little thin. You had Whitaker and Graves, and then it got a little dicey, but... Mm -hmm. And it all it all goes back to the good coaching too, as well. I mean, y your backups are only as good as the coaching, you know. Good night with a pretty, pardon the pun, good kick to Montgomery, and he is stacked up and driven backwards well, at the 24-yard line. Kick return. Montgomery good the night line. with a nice job, and 28 Dodson in on the special team stop. 12:13 on the clock as. Paul, uh, we got all kind of things going. Yeah, we got some new information for you. A new school record for the Vulcans. 69 points put up on the board today. Breaks the record of 68, which they put up against Cheney back in either it was either 02 or 03. And I'm not sure how many substitutions, not familiar that familiar the, with, directly with Mansfield, but just by sight. And that pass is complete as Brandon Hunt is back in the football game. Well, well the Mansfield, uh, they they use a lot of a lot of options at the wide receiver position, especially when you when you run a full wide receiver set, you need to have about good a good eight receivers on your team. So you're going to be seven guys in and out all game. I mean, we've seen a little bit of Rodney Davis here and there, a little bit of Tyrone Robinson here and there, and and uh, same with Matt Hildebrand and uh, Ozzy Mathis as well. So. Well, I'm watching Fields get loose on the sideline. If there's one player on Mansfield that really doesn't need to get loose, I don't think it's Brandon Fields. <laughs> and there's Pooh Bear McNeil, who's just been unable to get anything going on the ground. He picked up a couple passing yardage, or receiving yardage, but he got maybe a yard there, and it's now going to be third and two, and Mansfield really going to the hurry up here. They're going to try to sneak with Hunt, and he has spun, and it looks like they're going to give him the spot at around the 36-yard line. That will be enough for the first down, but Brandon the point I was trying to make earlier with California, I'm not sure how many subs Mansfield's bring in. California basically has their entire second team and some of their third team players in. Doing this against Mansfield's maybe first and second team, that says an awful lot. Yeah, we're seeing guys like Travis Williams, number 50 A.B. Conley in the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys like that who are, are the majority of their time is usually on special, special teams, teams, and yeah. now they're getting in the game, so. Hunt's going to fire this over the middle, and there's a good hit made by Mike Harrington, 44, sophomore linebacker from Fort Cherry, Cannonsburg, PA. Also in the game, I believe, on the far side of the field is number 20, Avery Hawkins. I don't even think he played against Fairmont. If not, it was very sparingly, but Hawkins is a player that's had some experience here at California, and now in a backup role with Chris Glass taking over that other corner position. Yeah, Hawkins is actually a senior here. He's mm -hmm. one of those guys that came in back when there Blitz. wasn't much depth. Wow. And on the stop, that was 42 Darren Burns, who atones for his earlier mistake and buries Brandon Hunt for a eight-yard loss and eight-yard loss. And this will make it third down and about 14, but he came untouched off the corner. Yeah, there was no stopping Darren Burns, and as you said, perhaps wanting to atone for the earlier mistake that he made, and he does that right there. Um, also oh. in the game, number 25, Kwabini Bafo Bonnie Jr. No, that Jr. would be his class. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I saw Burns tag. I saw 42. It looked like Jason Ellis was coming around the corner. <laughs> yeah, he reminds you a lot like Jason Ellis, about the same size. I believe Ellis had a little bit of a bigger upper body. Yeah. He's more of a, a rush end type player, whereas Burns is just one of those prototypical outside linebackers with the speed. That pass in and out of the hands of Rodney Davis. Will Forbes was in coverage, and here comes Mr. Fields. <laughs> His teammates should buy him some Mrs. Fields for all the work he's done tonight. <laughs> And he will kick the ball away. Paul, this has been a pleasure to do this game. With it, it has. It has. It's a beautiful afternoon. Good weather. I mean, a bit of a win, but we've had a very comfortable afternoon sitting on Liberty top of the roof here. Liberty gets to the punt. Wow. 
Sorry to interrupt you, Paul, no, but Nate right. Liberty gets to the punt, and now a mad dash with sick during fields. California will get the ball either way. Wow. Nate Liberty was being held yeah, by the up sure. back, and he still got a paw on it, and good for Nate Liberty. I'm surprised there wasn't a flag on that play, because he, you're, you're right, he was definitely being held, and he just stuck out that left hand as his body was being twisted and pulled by the defender and got a hand on it. And, you know, all game I was kind of wondering when would they eventually get to one, because they'd gotten close a few times earlier. Well, well Nate Liberty's one of the nicest guys on this team, and he had a big interception last week, and in his senior season, he's kind of playing special teams as they brought some new players in, but he's been in the system for a while. He's one of the smartest players on the team, and he does things like that. You don't need to go after the punter when you're up by 70 points, but still, good effort there. Well, it looks like there's almost no way that California will not get over 70 points. Is that 15 or 19? <laughs> That's 15. Oh, boy. That is Greg Dapper in the game at quarterback. And Rush, six for the Vulcans. Wow. 75 to six. As Greg Dapper comes in, hands the ball off, and he gets to go back to the clipboard. Greg Dapper, 6'3", 210 pounds from Keystone Oaks High School in Pittsburgh. He's, he's a guy that we got to see play quite a lot a couple years ago. And he, unfortunately, during a, during a season where he was – had become the starter due to injury to the, the regular starter. He broke his leg at Lockhaven in an unfortunate injury, which ended his season there. That's actually what brought Dumb back to being a yeah, quarterback. you're right. And uh, California quarterbacks, again, not to make light, have had, uh, seems to have problems with the, the same injury. And, and you're right about the instability of had a quarterback, and now it seems like this year they got all kind of options back there. Good night on for the extra point. Flags are down, kick is up. Mm -hmm. And it is no good. That will be the third missed attempt. And it looks like they may have another chance at this one. But you know, in, in Dapper's defense, he was thrown into a situation where it was one of Luckhart's first couple of years here. They, the depth was not as good as it is now. And he was thrown into a situation where he had to start when he wasn't supposed to be the starter. The, the starter had gone down already. But in my mind, Dapper will always, remember to be, at, will always be remembered at Cal for his overtime touchdown pass to Brandon Jackson against Slippery Rock, which ended the 14-game losing streak. And, and that gets a lot of smiles from our crew. Offsides, and uh, we'll re-kick. And in Dapper's defense as well, there was a different offensive coordinator here, Cal, yeah. and the offense was nowhere near as effective as it is under head co or under offensive coordinator Mike Keller. And that kick at the same spot, wide left. So good night, one of two. Good night, Mansfield. <laughs> It's been good night, Mansfield, since about 2.30 this afternoon, 75 to six. The Vulcans all over the Mountaineers. Still 9.33 left to go, first half. And yes, 80 is not out of the realm of possibility. 75, that, that's- Oh, the that barn door's been shut long ago. <laughs> they have iron bars, a master lock. The whole nine on it. We got federal marshals out there guarding it. The barn door is closed. John Fowler's going to kick off. I think they've had to rotate kickers so nobody gets tired out there. Yeah. You know? Poor Ronnie Montgomery sprints back to his end zone. You know, I, tell you, I, I don't know how kickers do it because, I mean, you, you go out there before the game and, and you, you warm up a lot by kicking a lot of balls and then you come in the game and in a situation like this, you have, you have to kick the ball 10, 15 times in a ball game. I know just me several times wanting to go out and have fun kicking field goals. Your, your foot gets tired. It feels heavy after a while kicking that football. I'm trying to figure out how many touchdowns they've scored. Does 11 sound right? Well, there was that one, make it 77. two, three, four, five in the first half. Well, here's Montgomery. He's got a little bit of room. Gets by Dotson and being drugged down by Antoine Cox. A Uniontown native, and Montgomery has had a couple good returns, gets the ball to the 45, as Mansfield's players, staff, and fans just trying to find something to cheer for, because they missed a couple extra points. They made a two-point conversion, correct? Yeah, there was actually six touchdowns in the second half, five in the first half, so you're correct, 11, 11. touchdowns on the game. Wow, that, yep. that's got to be a, a school record as well. And, and no field goals, things. no field goals. They've missed three extra points, but made up one conversion. And now a timeout. By being Mansfield. Take, being taken by Mansfield. Each team now with two remaining in the second half. 9.21 left from Van Norman Stadium. California 75, Mansfield six. 
and Slezik with Paul Genua, only the second game of the California schedule. And Paul, let's take a look now, since we've got about a day and a half, <laughs> to, uh, to take a look at the California schedule. We talked about Monmouth next week. Mm -hmm. Then California has their first home game in about a month, September 24th, at Cl against Clarion. Family day at the university. Now, the first game, which was move-in day, had a tremendous crowd up at Adamson Stadium. At least I thought so. I believe it was about around 3,800 was estimated to be there. And that game was on live television, too, and a very wide audience as well. And Clarion, still a lot of bad feelings going back to last year to the punter <laughs> on that Hail Mary at the end of the game. Brandon Dano to the punter. And uh, Clarion's one of those teams that's kind of in a position like Cal was a year or so ago, trying to rebuild and get a couple extra players to get back in. And that should be a, that should be a good test there for California as well because that basically starts their West season. Yeah, and, and this year is, is Dando's year, so to speak, because last year I know they – they had a couple, you know, different quarterbacks they were using in the beginning of the year. This year, it, Dando is the starter, and it will be his team to to do or to do or die, so to speak. I guess as McNeil, as Dando goes, McNeil, so will go the Clarion McNeil. Golden Eagles this year. McNeil gets about nine. That's one of his longest runs of the day. Travis Williams with the stop. Following that, California will go to Slippery Rock for the first time in a couple years. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's at the Rock, a 6 p.m. start October 1st. And Slippery Rock's a team that's kind of near the bottom of the PSAC right now. That, that seems like since Cal beat them, they haven't really been the same. Yeah, th however, they played Cal pretty close last year. You know, Cal built up an early big lead before uh, Slippery Rock made a, a big comeback in the second half. However, Cal was able to hold on to, uh, to I, be, I believe, a one-score one lead. Whether I mean, what's one-score win, whether it was a field goal or a touchdown, I, I can't remember. Uh, October 8th, Edinburgh at home, 3 p.m. start homecoming. Now, last year, if I'm correct, IUP was the homecoming game. Shippensburg. Shippensburg, excuse IUP me. the year before that. And Edinburgh was picked to win the West. Mm -hmm. So that's the big game this year. It's it's uh, the the teams predicted to finish 1-2 and two in the division. Fortunately for us, we have the home game this year, and it's on homecoming. So there should be a huge crowd at Adams. Adamson Stadium for that game. Nice hit. Darren Burns with another big lick on Rodney Harris on the wing there. And it'll be second down. Following that game, California will be back on the road to one of my favorite places, Seth Grove Stadium in South Central Pennsylvania, Shippensburg University, a 1 p.m. start on October 15th. Ship, they've lost a lot of the weapons they've had over the years. You saw Joe, uh, John, Coons, John Coons, who has killed California, including a six-touchdown performance a couple years ago at Amson Stadium, playing for the Steelers, one of their last cuts. And uh, another team that needs to maybe add a couple players, maybe a little better than Clarion, but California always plays that team pretty tough. And Rodney Harris is finally going to get in the end. And Rodney Davis, excuse me, will get six more for Mansfield. And a lot of cheers from the faithful. And that's good to see for the Mansfield crowd who never really turned on their team in this game, which yeah. could have been the change, could have been a could have been a possibility, but. Mansfield will add six more here, and they make it 75 to 12 with about seven and a half to play. Yeah, only about half the crowd that was here at the start of the game, but but they're still they're still cheering for their team, and th that was a nice, nice well a well developed screen play from Hunt to, to who was that Davis? Davis, yeah, yeah. So good play, good blocking, and uh, the Cal second team or third team defense allows a touchdown. Had a mare for the mayor on for the point after he had his first one go wide, and this Ooh. one's blocked. And Mayer eats that one, 94. Justin Taravisky took that wow. right in the chest. There's a lineman a couple years ago for California named Dan, Dan Smith. He wore 58, I believe he graduated two years ago, and he yep. blocked something like 13 kicks in his career. And California with two kicks blocked in this game, doing a nice job. Yeah, they're doing very well, playing just, just well all around defensively, special teams, offensively. And Taravisky is a guy who is gonna cause pressure up front, just like Anthony Rose, a big man. And um, he's making his his size known up there. You in mentioned the special teams. You mentioned the three, four, those front linemen. They're not going to be big numbers guys, but you'll notice if they're not playing well. Yeah, th their their effort on the defensive side of the ball is what gets the linebackers and the secondary their numbers. Back to the California schedule. Following Shippensburg, you don't want to say a couple easy ones, but they have back-to-back -back home games. October 22nd against Cheney, a team that California basically has owned over the past decade or so. However, Cheney got a win last yes, week. Yes, they did, and they were winning at halftime today as well against St. Paul. And then Senior Day, October 29th, the final home game against Lockhaven, another team that California has just beat up on over the years. Yeah, Lockhaven, one of those teams that is, is, is not 
a strong football program, but Cal has had their troubles in the past when they've gone to Lock Haven. Usually when Lock Haven comes to play at Adamson, the Vulcans take care of business. And then they close out the season with the biggest rivalry game of them all, one of the biggest in all D2 football, and some would say maybe not because California can't win. <laughs> but November 5th at Indiana University a Pennsylvania game that, who knows, could very well decide the PSAC. And we'll see, I believe that's l number three. Yeah, Huddleston. Huddleston, yes. Forgot who he was. He hasn't been on the field in so long. Gets the ball up to the 28-yard line now. We take a look at this roster, Paul. Right now, we're going to be 2-0. and oh. We have three, six, eight games left. Give me a number. Give me a record. You know what? I'm going to say, was it 10 games altogether? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. I'm going to say 8-2. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Two. I believe their, lo their only losses will come. Um, they will lose the ship on the road because that's a tough place to play. And mm. they will either lose to Edinburgh or to IUP. I'm not sure which, but they'll lose one of those So you're two saying games. a Cal win at Monmouth next week? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. No, they Seven do lose to three. Monmouth. That's the one I'm missing. No, no, they'll beat Edinburgh and IUP. Okay. I was I was forgetting that Monmouth game. I don't count that out of one anyway. It's Division One AA. Howard hands off oh, to Ramar Rush, mask. and good call, buddy. The yeah. flag comes good in. Good Cecil good Howard good getting good some good more good snaps good under good centers. Good We're at 724. We're going to get a penalty good here. Good this should be a five-yarder. Yeah. You know, I want to go back to the IUP game, the last game of the season. In, in, in my four years here at Cal, this is my fourth football season. We have not Mine as beaten, well. we have not well. beaten IUP. We haven't beaten IUP in many years. We haven't beaten them since 1984 altogether. I personally, I was seven years old. Seven. I was. I was born. I was being born in '84. Last time we beat IUP. I personally have a very, very strong dislike for IUP football, and I would love nothing more than to close out the season with a win at their home turf. And that'd be your final football game, more than likely. Would be my final football game. And uh, I think everybody on campus, not just for you, but would like to uh, take care of that game as well. First well, down after the penalty. We'll move the ball to 46. Clock continues to wind. Now seven minutes. Greg Dapper. Back in a quarterback. Let and him throw a pass. Come on. And he'll hand the ball off. Rush has been the workhorse here in the second half. And wow. why not? Wow. He has burned down the sideline, makes a player fall, <laughs> and six more <laughs> for the wow. Vulcans. Three touchdowns in the second half for Romaro Rush. That would make her 81 to 12. No flags. That one comes from 55 yards out. Rush has to be over 100 yards. Oh, he's got to be. I'm, I'm not sure about Calhoun, but. Rush and Bagwell definitely have gone over 100 for the game. Bagwell could have been back at Cal by now. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, this is just unbelievable. I mean, I don't want to say Mansfield's that bad of a team. Perhaps Cal is just that good. What about that speed on the edge? And did you see the way he made that safety fall? He, and, and then he cut back across the middle of the field and made two other guys miss, Montgomery and I believe number five. Andre Turner, he made them both miss at the very end of the play there. John Fowler gets a rep at the extra point. Knocks it through, 82 to 12. A 70 point lead, Wow. 70 point margin for the Vulcans. Still 6.50 left to go here in the football game. Now, now we're talking maybe 90 points. Left, maybe I got 90 nothing points. I got nothing left. See, maybe we should just start reading the Mountaineer program here, see if there's any, anything <laughs> interesting in there. For those interested in the Monmouth game, I believe there is a bus trip or something going to that game as well. My best guess, if you're interested in that game, uh, contact the athletic department. They'll be able to take care of you. We are going to cover the game uh, on tape delay television as well as live on our sister station, WCAL. That game is 1 p.m. next Saturday from Monmouth, New Jersey. Uh, check out our station, 91.9 FM, or on the internet. All California games streamed live on the internet at either calvalkins.com, www.calvalkins.com, or wcal.cup.edu. And a note to everybody that usually listens to our games on the radio, all Vulcan home games will be internet only. There will be no radio for Vulcan home games. So we encourage everybody to either sit at their computer or come on out to Hampton Stadium as Fowler boots this one through the end zone. Hitting still going on out there. A lot of... A lot of aggression still needs to be get, getting out of the system. Yeah, four, and 
41 Brandon Heckel is now in there, sophomore inside linebacker, 5'11", 225 pounds, playing some special teams. You got number He's two. from Wakini, Kansas. What a name. What and a name. And one of two players along with A.B. Conley from Dodge City Junior College in Kansas. And you also got number 26, Rashad Griffin, getting some action. He's 5'10", 180 pounds out of Westerville, Ohio. And Griffin uh, recovered a punt block okay. last week against Fair or two weeks ago against Fairmont. And I, be I believe we've mentioned just about everyone who's in the game. Or number 99, Andre Williams, a sophomore, six foot three ten, out of Pittsburgh Central Catholic, last year's state champions. And Davis doesn't get as many yards on this carry. Mike Harrington and Darren Burns over there. Burns playing a nice game here in the second half, and just watching him out there, he's just that athletic type of backer. Six three two fifteen's got prototypical size for that position at this level. Somebody that could step in and spell Butler at outside linebacker a couple snaps or in pass rush situations. And he's going to be slotted over to cover a slot receiver here. <laughs> and fumble, balls on the ground. Oh, I thought it was at least. And Darren Burns with the second sack wow. of the game. And also there was Tara Visky who's played a strong game. I thought the ball was loose. I, it looked as though it came out because yeah. Burns had hit Hunt right on that, that arm that was holding the football. And Hunt was only holding it by one hand. I don't know how he held on, but lucky for him he did. Either way, it wouldn't have mattered off sides against California. Now with six minutes left to play. We take a look at Mansfield's schedule. Uh, they will drop to 0-2 September 17th at Clarion. Home against Kutztown. Remember, this is an East team. Uh, at Lock Haven, then Cheney at a very tough Westchester team. At, against Bloomsburg, and then three straight road games mm. at Millersville, at East Stroudsburg, and then moving out to play at Coastal Carolina. Mm. So Mansfield didn't do themselves any favors with some of the scheduling there. No. Especially, you never, I don't think ending the year on three straight road games is exactly what you want to do. Mm, no. California, actually, I think schedule is really beneficial, especially in the IEP game, playing Cheney and Lockhaven right before. Yeah. They'll swing it out, and the catch is made by Tyrone Robinson, and he... The Vulcan Ballhawks going for the strip. He'll get a couple yards. Referees are going to keep the clock winding, staying in bounds. They'll be third down and long. You know, the only the only disappointing thing about them having to go to Mon the next week is that it is so far. You're not going to get a big crowd at the game, which which when you're already playing a team who is supposed to be better than you, yeah. we'll find out for sure next week. Um, it, it hurts that you don't have. The, the crowd there to, to support to support you and plus two straight weeks with long road trips the team left yesterday stayed overnight last yeah. night which we could have done such things but uh we had other games to do as a tough snap there from hunts but it's two straight and it kind of messes with your practice schedule a little bit because you have to adjust for traffic intercepted nate liberty. nate liberty makes it the 40 still on his feet he's looking for the end zone and he is brought down at the 20. Liberty's second wow. interception of the season, giving the team lead there. And there comes the flags. Wow. Yeah, last week, or two weeks ago, excuse me, he had an interception where it deflected off of two players, and he yeah. had a very nice catch just before the ball hit the ground. Well, he's already blocked a punt today. And we'll see who the foul is on. He'll go against Monmouth, so California will be even closer and getting near that 90 point mark. I don't think they'll go for two to get it. Yeah, I don't think if, so. If they do get to the end zone, but hey, I can see I've seen an 80 point football game in my lifetime, so. <laughs> and it wasn't Bell Vernon losing, sorry guys. <laughs> Fair's fair, correct? I'm not sure what the call was on that. Dude. Personal foul against Monmouth. Mon Mansfield. Or Mansfield. Yeah. You got me confused, Paul. There are too many M, M teams in the next couple weeks, so Mansfield and then Monmouth. Oh, 4.52 left to play. Who's that? Is that Cecil Howard? Cecil Howard is going to be in the game at quarterback. Rush, Martinick, Hoskin, and I believe that's Perry Ivory at the top. And Rush is looking for four. He's inside the five, down to the four, maybe the three. Second and goal coming up. Yeah, Rush, one of those guys, like we said, he's, he's a third string back or even more than fourth, that. Really. Fourth, really. And, yeah, he comes in and just runs hard, runs hard, and the offensive line just keeps blocking and not even trying to score touchdowns. You just, you just no, do just it. they're just playing the game, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you eventually run down the field so far where you end up in the end zone. It's not like you can extend the field just to – 
waste the clock. You and it's know? not like they're going to take a knee and then kick a field goal and give the ball right back. Yeah. Greg Dapper in a quarterback. I'd like to see him throw a ball. We all would. His brother's also on the team as a wide receiver. Yes. And this is going to be Rush. And pinballs wow. his way He's in. into the end zone. Touchdown wow. six for the Vulcans. 88 to 12. And if I'm correct, that's four touchdowns yeah, for Romaro Rush. I believe you're correct. Four for Rush. We saw Lombardi with two. So that's six rushing. 12 touchdowns. Well, Bagwell had two rushing. They were receiving one rushing. Or, uh, no, he had two of each. Paul, yeah. those were so long ago. <laughs> Seems like, well, I mean, we, we woke up at 5 o'clock this morning, or some of us before then, we're, we're out out of campus about 5.30. I mean, this is, this is about nighttime blocked. for us already. Extra point was blocked. Now, that can be returned for two points, if I'm correct. Yes, you are correct. But tackle was made immediately. Fowler, if anybody's had a tough day today, it's been John Fowler. <laughs> He's had two misses on extra points. He's had one block now. He's had a couple kickoffs not go his way, and his punting hasn't been spectacular. But... Those things can be addressed, and when you're up 88 to 12, it's good when you have to look for things that went wrong today, such as that. Yeah. 3.53 left to play. The can, we just, can we end it now? Crowd slowly dissipating here from Van Norman Stadium. I mean, what else is there to play for in this game? I want to thank our shortened crew here that made the trip early at 5 plus a.m. Many of us were at the high school game that went late last night. Uh, during the radio broadcast night, John McGuire and Joe Rubel. Uh, Johnny did the game with me last night. Did a phenomenal job in his first game. John Katora taking snaps at camera along with our director, producer, and driver, Gary Smith. Katora also put the pedal to the metal a few times to get us here uh, yeah, on he schedule. And Paula, pleasure. This is the first time I've really done a whole lot with you. And, uh, yeah, we, well, we've done some basketball in the past. We've done, of course, my first ever broadcast a soccer game. Yeah, that's in the, right. In the downpour up at the new soccer fields up at uh, Roadman Park. This is our first Cal California Vulcan game together, and it's gone, gone quite well. Yeah, I, I you've done uh, you've really matured as an announcer, and you've done uh, quite well for yourself here today, especially. I've had a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Montgomery gets up to the 35. His legs have got to be tired. <laughs> and, and just as I say, it looks like he may have cramped up. <laughs> what did you call that one, or what? He needs the whirlpool tonight. <laughs> See if we find any other bodies out there. And I think we've uh, basically covered everybody for California. It's been on the field tonight. Yeah, I, don't, I think the only new player they could put in the game would be to bring the coaches in and let them play. Number 17, Tyler Blakesley, a freshman, or excuse me, a junior quarterback out of Elmira, New York, is in the game. Elmira's right up the road. Pooh Bear McNeil is still in there, and that is about what he's done all night. Yep, Gobbled up and stopped about five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Rashad Griffin. One of the Vulcans involved in bringing him down also there was 56, Chet Henderson. Yeah. Clock now shows 325 to play in the football game. Second and 14. Another receiver is in the game for Mansfield, number 84, Mike Lengel, sophomore, 6'8", 220 pounds, actually listed as a tight end out of Mechanicsburg, Cumberland Valley High School. Been through that area several times, and Blakesley faring no different than the rest of his teammates. And that is 21, Travis Williams, who's made a couple big plays tonight, and this is where coaches see who's still playing, you know, whose motor's still running when you're up like this, and see who maybe gets themselves a couple extra plays, a couple extra series in on the game, move up on that uh, depth chart a little bit. And Travis Williams, one of those players, listed as a backup to Jared Dumb at strong safety. Called his name a couple times on special teams, but he's made a pretty good uh, showing for himself in the normal defensive package. Also in the game for Mansfield, number 89, Donnie McDonough, sophomore, 6'4", 200 pounds out of 
a Western Way High School in Waymark, Pennsylvania, and also number 33, Jeff Tanner, six foot, 165 pounds, wide receiver out of Shepton, Hazleton area high school. Well, one man who's been on the field a lot, 32, Brandon Fields, back out there, a junior, 5'9", 205 out of Altoona High School in Altoona. And he'll kick to Perry Ivory. Well, he had six punts in the first half. I believe he at least doubled that number in the second half. So he's etching himself in the record book for Mansfield. I saw that. He had his last one blocked by Liberty. Cal just backing off this one. And a liner. And how Fair catch was called. Nice, uh, nice display there by yeah. Ivory. Cal's probably with a minute and a half left now. Just going to take a couple knees and pack the bus up. California. Yeah, I don't think Mansfield's going to waste any time with trying to use any timeouts. 134. Coach Luckhart will now go to 18 and 16. In his California career, two games above 500. One of the few times he's, I don't know if he's ever been two games above 500 here at California. Yeah, I'm not sure. well, he's been, he's always hovered around that 500 yeah, mark. His first season he was six and five, and then the next year, I believe they started out two and one, so he may have been two games up before Last finishing year was that season four and, four and seven, so. To start, and they will go to that victory formation. Greg Dapper's gonna take the knee. And the point barrage will end, but 88 points, a school record. The most points they scored since putting up 68 against Cheney a couple years ago. Topped it by 20. And 88 to 12. Mansfield did better than they did a couple, or last year, putting 12 up. But they still have lost these last two years by a combined score of 151 to 18. Mm. And how about Cal's defense? I mean, oh, they they were just smothering. Eighteen all day. points in two games. Earn allowed. And Ernest McNeil, maybe thirty yards, thirty-five yards. Yeah, twenty-two in the first half, and didn't do much in the second half. I know that. Fifty seconds left to go, and if the referees will probably not set it, so the California will not have to turn it over or kick the ball here. And that's probably what they're going to do. They're going to take one more knee, and that's it. Yeah, should be over. But it, I mean, it, it's a beautiful field up here, a beautiful area. I was glad we got to come up here for this game. I mean, not not often we get to come to, to Mansfield, get to see a different part of the state, beautiful country all around. you got a farm up just across midfield, up the hill a bit. Well, California will be playing more of the East teams in the upcoming years as they will be more crossover games. You'll see the Kutztowns, the Stroudsburgs, the Bloomsburgs, and Westchester as well, Millersville. But for California, as the clock winds down, 88 to 12, all over man. So we remind everybody, next week's game is at Monmouth in New Jersey. Uh, that game will be carried live on our sister station, 91.9, the FMWCAL, as well as on the internet at either calvalkins.com or WCUP or WCAL.CUP.edu and also be filmed for tape delay on CUTV. For our, all our crew, Paul, again, a pleasure to work with you, buddy. Thank you, Ben. California all over Mansfield. They roll and get a good start on their 2005 season. California 88, Mansfield 12. For Paul Genuine, Ben Slazik, good night. God bless. We'll see you next time here on CUTV. Good night, everybody.